Bless you. Amanhã? Do you want to just uh, maybe reach out to Susie as well, Leo? Yeah, I'm talking, talking to her. Yeah. I think Sophie is uh, from the RDA, actually. Yeah. It's Sophie. Hi, uh, Gordon, how are you? You there, mate? Sorry, your audio just came through. How are you? Uh, just, you just click on the bottom left-hand corner and unmute yourself. There we go. Okay, how are you? There you are. There you are. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Looking forward to a great morning. Great. Wonderful, wonderful. What uh, whereabouts are you, um, Gordon? We're, I'm actually based in Sydney. Oh, you are in Sydney. Okay, yes. fantastic. Yeah. But you're one of the, uh, you, you, you get involved. You got business up that way in, in Central West? No, I'm, try, I'm doing a mentoring service and I'm trying to get more clients out in the country and I think there's a big need for them. So I'm just trying great. to expand my exposure and also my contacts. Beautiful. Wonderful. And whereabouts in Sydney are you? Uh, Northern Beaches. All the beaches, that's yeah. a beautiful part of the world. I'm actually yeah. looking directly at you. I'm at uh, in Vaucluse. It was very nice this morning when we went down for a swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yes. it would have been chilly, but yeah, did you, <laughs> you do it most mornings. Uh, every morning in the water, yes. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, nice. That's uh, hail rain or shine. Hail rain or shine. You're making me. Uh, I, I I had a place at Bondi for quite a while, and um, they uh, yeah I I. You know what? I, I got to put a hand on heart. I probably should have done it more than I did. Done you only know you're missing out when you leave. I know, correct. It's like, you know what? The, 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 the times I did do it in the colder weather, I felt you, it, it just gets you started for the day ridiculously. And uh, you know the Wim Hof methodology? Have you no. ever come up? Uh, maybe write that down in, in your notes and put there. Wim Hof is, um, is a guy that does like breathing and cold immersion training and uh you know sort of he talks about the, the benefits to how it repairs your body like he's in his like 60s and he climbed mount everest and a whole bunch of other other things as well so um but he goes he's all about get immersing yourself in the cold that's what he's all about and it, like breathing techniques in order to deal with the cold but what how rejuvenating it is for your body so oh beautiful i mean you get in the habit of doing it every day it's fine yeah 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 correct which is that's what he talks about so yeah. What I have been doing is he talks about if you just want to start and get started, I've been doing that, having a normal shower, and then before I get out, just getting into the cold for like 15, 20, 30, 40 seconds just to get you going, get you pumped up for the day. So I, uh, I have been doing that. So that's a start. Good luck. We'll see you in the morning. Beautiful. Done. Fantastic. Sophie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks very much for your help leading up to this. Yeah, no, thank you. Like, sorry, I've got you on two screens. That's getting a bit confusing. <laughs> oh, yeah, why, why not um, have two screens? You should, you know, <laughs> the more morale, the better. So, come on. Yeah, absolutely. No, I had my voice going everywhere. No, thank you so much for this today. This is going to be really great. We're very, very excited. So yeah, just, we're just having a few just, technical uh, issues in the office, but we're sorting that at the moment. So, no worries. Um, we'll, give yeah. it, we'll, give, we'll give it five, ten minutes. We'll get everyone on. I'll just yeah. say hello to a few people and get a bit of a idea of some of the businesses we're going to be working with. So, Kim Chandler, how are you? Yeah, sorry, I had to unmute. Good, thank That's you. Right. Sorry, no, computers at the same time, and I'm sorry, I will, I actually can only stay for one hour, then I go to my next Zoom on another subject, so. No, I'm just no, worries. no worries, and just, what's your, where are you based and what's, what's your business? I'm based in Dubbo and I'm independent at the moment. I'm going through a transition stage, but yes, I used to be a business owner. Yep. And, and what, then my specialty is marketing and business management. Right, fantastic. And so you're looking at getting back into business on your own or what's the plan? I uh, haven't decided. Okay. No worries. Yeah. Well, you know, the great thing about, I think, what's happened with COVID, it's just sort of given everyone a bit of a reset button. And I, I think it's made everybody um, think a couple of, you know, think twice about what it is that they want to do rather than mm -hmm. what they were doing, you know. And I think it's been a, a, a really good mindset shift for a lot of people. And, you know, I'm doing more of what I love. Like, I was, I was traveling so much for business. And the, the, the challenge was that I probably wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought I was. And now I've had a chance to sort of work with 
you know, um, you know, at the cold face with businesses again. I've just enjoyed it phenomenally. So it's uh, it's mm. it's given me a new lease on life. I'm very very happy right now. So great to uh, great to have you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank great. you. Thank uh, you. Leo can um, send you my email, Kim, as well. But Leo, do you want to just send, um, put put in the chat box for Kim? And if you want to uh, reach out and have a chat, Kim, we can do that. Uh, Hitesh, have I said that correctly? Yes. Yes. How great. are you, Andrew? Very well, thank you, Hitesh. Where where in the world are you today, and and what is your business? So I'm, I'm in Sydney. I am just finishing up with a company called 3M where I head up some marketing operations yes. for three business groups. And I'm trying to uh, uh, actively get into a startup business in healthcare technology. So it's very early days. Yes. Uh, right from the start of setting up my company and, you know, getting in touch with business coaches. And, you know, by this week, I'll have the organization set up. Where I am at is uh, I've worked with four research institutions, two in Australia and two in the United States. And uh, starting off with 140 projects, we've now culled them down to seven. So uh, okay, I've got some really good uh, ideas on artificial intelligence and medicine. The next step after I set up my company is to, uh, you know, look at angel investors and things like that. Right. Beautiful. That's, that's, that's something we could do. At the end of this session, Atesh, I'm going to offer a sort of a 90-minute deep dive, one-on-one deep dive with either myself or one of my team. Okay. Um, we can we can definitely touch. I'm not going to touch on that stuff today, but yeah, yeah, exactly. I've had a lot of experience there. If you look at my my Google my background, you'll okay. see that I'm from a, a venture capital and investment point of view. I've done quite a bit of work um, in that space. You know, Thank over, you so much. That's very very kind of you. Beautiful, fantastic. And uh, Kirsten, whereabouts are you from? Hey, how you going? I'm based in Orange. Fantastic. I'm a, what is your business or what are you, what are you doing right now? Julie Orange. Um, I run a company called BDM by the hour where I outsource um, sales and account management services for small business. Great. Fantastic. And a, a majority of your clients in, um, in you know, the Central West or you, you've got people, you work remote or how does I, it work? Yeah, I work remote. I don't discriminate. Um, only right. that I only work with the company, companies within Australia. I haven't got any plans to go overseas. Yeah, wonderful. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks Looking for having me. To it. so just going to give a bit of a lay of the land so I can try and make it as bespoke as possible and, and touch on as many um, things as possible that are going to be relevant to people. Uh, if anyone else wants to switch on their mic or their camera, I don't mind if you're in pyjamas, guys. Don't worry. If I could, I would. I just, uh, you know, so I've, and I've, I've sat in plenty of webinars and uh, Zooms where I've been in my board shorts and ugg boots, I'm not going to lie. So I did get told by um, James from the radio station yesterday that it's been very, very cold in orange. So for those of you who are, are based up there, he said, make sure you wear your thermals. Um, I said, I won't wear my thermals, but I'm not going to lie. I've got a suit on, but I've gone and put on my ugg boots. I put on my ugg boots just to make you feel a little bit more like you're at home, guys, that you guys are a bit cold up there. So I'll be like that too. It is cold in Sydney. It, the, but the sun is shining. I'm not going to deny it. The sun is shining. And I heard you got snow. You got snow? Is that right? So, have you got snow, snow up there? I don't know if we've had snow um, as yet, but... James, um, friends, you guys have had snow. The radio, oh, the radio presenter yesterday on your local radio station told me that you had snow. It might, it might have been up at the top of the mountain, but look, we have had it um, a few weeks ago as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, I think, a top of uh, five degrees today. So, nice and fresh. Okay, beautiful, fantastic. Um, guys, we might get started. Feel free, as I said, um, guys, I, I actually prefer a very interactive session. We'll get a lot more out of it for everyone. And I am vigilant that... Um, some people, if like ideally, we'd love to get you to stay for the whole two and a half hours. Kim, you did mention that you, you may not be able to, but uh, what Leo's gone and done is put my email in the um, chat box so you can um, reach out to me directly on email and we can organize. I am going to offer at the end of this um, session a a one-on-one 90-minute -on -one strategy business growth session with either myself or one of my team. So that's complimentary. So if you do need to leave Kim, you can email Leo directly and he can organize that for you as well. So, um, but we'd love for you guys to stay on as long as possible um, and go from there. So there's a couple of things, guys. Um, first of all, if you could do me a favor and, and whether you're putting your camera on or not, if you could actually just change your name to your full name. So obviously we've got a registered list and Obviously, if you know if you, there is Paige, if you can just put Paige in your surname, there is Sophie, put, put, put your surname in. So if you, if you don't know how to do that, all you do is just go hover over your picture 
you click on the little three um, three dots, the little blue th three dots that are in the right hand side of your photo, and then you just click rename and you can pop your name in there correctly. So if you can do that for me at a minimum, that would be fantastic. Um, the next thing that we would love for you to do as well is uh, obviously open up your chat box. So if you can see chat there, and you'll bring that down the right hand side of your screen. Obviously you'll, you'll see some of our faces, but obviously you um, you can be involved in the, in the uh, in, oh, there we go. A warm 11 degrees here in uh, Lake, I'm gonna have a go at this, Kajaligo. Did I give it a good go? There we go, Lake Kajaligo, there we go. So 11, that's not too bad, I can handle 11 degrees. Um, I'm Gordon gets in the water a lot less than that, so obviously I can handle that. The, uh, the next part is, guys, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a little reactions button, a little reactions button. So what I like to do is, if everyone can just give me a thumbs up that they found the reactions button, so just put a little thumbs up, click on that, so that way I know that you know how to do the reactions. Getting a few, like, Kim, how did you change the color of your reactions? That's a completely different color, that's great. Mine's yellow. Um, so what we'll do, guys, is throughout the day, uh, or throughout the, the next couple of hours, what we'll be doing is I might get you to interact with me a thumbs up on who's doing what, just so I can get a bit of a, an idea of, and that's why I was asking as many of you to tell me about the business that you're in. Um, and obviously, we'd love to assist you and, and be, make it a little bit more defined on the actual particular style of businesses that we're talking to today. Now, last but not least, um, we've got Leonardo G. Leo, can you put your little virtual hand up so people know who you are? Leonardo G is my business manager, guys. So he will be moderating throughout the day. He will put you on silent if he needs to, but I'm encouraging you not to have you put yourself on silent. I'd love for you to have your microphone going. So feel free to um, to take your microphone, put it on there. It's a very interactive session, and I'd love to get as much feedback as possible from people and obviously understand what you understand, what you don't, ask questions all the way through it. I always work a lot better there. You'll see if any of you have sort of checked my background, I've been presenting for the last sort of 12, 13 years. I've spoken in 11 countries. So, you know, and literally last year I did close to 300 gigs. Uh, right across Australia and Southeast Asia and um, over, over in Europe and America as well. So um, I think feel free to get involved. Um, but if you don't want to ask a question with your video going or with your sound going, all you can do is you can do two things. One, you can put your little virtual hand up and then I'll know you want to ask a question. So let's say you don't have your, your screen on, um, your video on, I'll ask you, you know, do you want to ask the question and just turn your, your audio on? Or you can put it in the chat box and Leo, maybe just keep an eye out if I don't realize that's happened because when I split the screen and share my screen with you guys, I'll probably lose my chat box so I can see your faces. And yeah, maybe Leo, you can just let me know um, and feel free to interrupt me at any time and ask me that particular question and ask, tell me who that's from. Now, what I'd love for you to do with the chat box, guys, on your on your right hand side is just put your name, your full name, and what business or industry you're in. So obviously, Hitesh, you for now you might just put look, um, I am biomedical or something like that. You don't need it. If, if you've got a business and you want to promote it, guys, put your website in there. That's not a bad idea as well. Pop your website in there. So we've got Hitesh in healthcare tech. Um, so pop your in. Maybe the t I know we've got a, a number of the team log on from RDA in Central West. Feel free to put you guys for you to put your details in there as well. So just put those in the chat box for me, guys. As many as possible will be really, really helpful for me. Anna, run my own small business, small events company. Fantastic. Anna, where's that from? Oh, you're on the screen. Great, I can talk to you. Where's the, is, are you based out in Orange? Do you want to, um, whereabouts are you based? Oh, sorry. No, I'm based in Melbourne. Oh, great. Wonderful. Whereabouts in Melbourne are you? Uh, Eastern suburbs. Eastern suburbs, great. Well, I grew up in Mooney Ponds. Oh, so okay. I do, and my brother's got, uh, he's a shareholder in, and we're partners in the uh, Jealous Craig real estate business. So we do quite a bit of uh, yeah, yeah. Eastern suburbs, yes. Uh, Gordon Lang, Enterprise Matters, Business Mentoring, great. Sally Hennessy from Australian Tour and Cruises, great. So that's fantastic. You're obviously looking to uh, get back into it and hopefully um, everything gets going as fast as possible for you. In that, Kristen BDM by the hour, I spoke to Kristen, they're fantastic. Kerry Davis, CPA, accountant, self-employed, wonderful. Linda from RDA Central West, wonderful. Uh, electronic Waste Life Cycle Solutions. Sue, is Sue on there? 
I wonder. I don't. I don't know what that is. Waste life cycle solutions, as in, um, I don't know if someone. So did... it's making sure that all of your e-waste and all your electronic gadgets, IT equipment, doesn't go into landfill and gets reused right. or recycled. Fantastic. It's, it's, and is that for Agri? Are you doing a lot for Agri? No. 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 It's, um, is, is it co but commercial? Is it commercial? Yeah, commercial. Commercial. And are you based? Yeah, up up in Central West or where where that's Sydney. Sydney, fantastic, beautiful. All right, wonderful. That's something different. I've, I've never done that one before. I will there touch on today to um, Agri. I've done a lot of work in regional areas before, so if anyone is in Agri and they want to sort of um, ask me any questions around that space, too, uh, we've done some um, capital raising and, and some work with a number of different uh, Agri businesses uh, nationally, right, right, right throughout the states and territories. So fantastic. Um, so feel free to put any more details in there, guys, and we'll just keep um, flicking along there. I'm going to share my screen, and guys, so I can get into some of the uh, the detail. Um, and just let me make make sure. Okay. Fantastic. Can everyone see that? You can give me a, either a physical thumbs up or a virtual thumbs up. I don't mind. I'm just going to expand all your beautiful faces. There we go. Great. Just gonna get all your faces back up. So I have lost the chat box, but that's okay. Leo's gonna let me know if you're gonna put a question in there. Uh, there we go. I've got most of you back on now. Chat. Okay. No, I've got a bit of chat here too. I can put that there. Right. Wonderful. All right, guys. Let's get into it. So first of all, thank you very much for um, Regional Development Australia, in particular Central West. Uh, for getting us involved um, in your community up there. A big shout out in particular to uh, Susie Welch and also to Sophie for all of the work that you've done to help with the preparation. Obviously, a big thank you to Leo, my business manager as well, for all the work that you guys have done. Um, probably when we first spoke, you know, we originally had a, had a, a campaign this year where we we're going to be spending a lot of time and energy actually back in, like in the in the regional communities and we were, and the rural communities were really keen to start working with them because we felt like they had literally there wasn't a lot of companies especially the, the city-based companies that were actually trying to stimulate those parts of the world and we understand that they are the backbone and the future of australia and certainly what has kept australia many times out of a recession over the years um, now we are on a paper recession, but obviously we do live in Australia, the greatest country in the world, the land of opportunity. And the moral of the story is that we have some great opportunities here. And we, thank God we do live in Australia because we can really get back to business very, very quickly, part of the fun of what our presentation was called today. So we are all about getting back to business and understanding about how to do that most of, more efficiently and more effectively. So um, I won't go into too much detail on who I am, uh, only because uh, you will get to know me throughout the day, and I think some of you might have sort of Googled and, and looked up some of this stuff. But obviously, I've spoken with and worked with a lot of large, um, small to medium, and also large companies right throughout Australia and internationally. I'm a big believer in surrounding yourself with the right community and the right sort of people in order to set yourself up for success. So what I mean by that is I'm very, very lucky that at the Entourage, we get to work with a number of Australia's business leaders and also philanthropic leaders as well. So obviously I've worked with Mark Bruce for the last 10 years. It was actually his birthday on Sunday. I was talking to him yesterday. Um, and obviously Jerry Harvey is one of my mentors, John McGrath from the real estate sector in you know, online sales. Ruslan Kogan, he often speaks at our events. Geraldine Cox, so you'll see in a brief moment that I have... Um, I have uh, two orphanages over in Cambodia, you'll see in my video, and Geraldine Cox is my, uh, my um, philanthropic and uh, spiritual mentor. She also um, runs the orphanages over there for the projects that we're involved in. So if anyone wants to look that up, it's Sunrise Village, Cambodia, if you're taking notes, uh, and you should be taking notes, guys, by the way, because like, I'm going to give you so much content today. The whole idea of it is at the end of it as well, guys, um, you can take that content, and then what you can do is you can go and run with that, number one. Number two, you can book in a complimentary 90-minute um, business growth strategy session with either myself or my team, and Leo will put the link up at the end of the uh, of the session. Beautiful. And then last but not least, Fred Chavasti from uh, finder.com.au. 
a little bit of a video just introduce me and so you know. What if I told you that together we could change the world and your dreams, our dreams could become a reality? What I'm very passionate about is becoming a world-class entrepreneur. Where that entrepreneurial mindset comes from is growing up in small business and around entrepreneurs, taking the driven mindset that an entrepreneur needs to have and implementing that into a larger organization to provide a world-class experience at an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial level. In 2009, I had the amazing privilege of participating in the first ever Australian Apprentice. Out of thousands of applicants, I made the top 12, and then I went on and ended up winning the first Australian Apprentice with Mark Burris. Andrew, of course, won the first Apprentice in uh, 2009, I think the very first one, the only non-celebrity apprentice, but he's become a celebrity. He understands property markets, not only instinctively, but intrinsically. I love affirmations, and my favorite affirmation is living the dream. Living the dream isn't just a mindset, it's actually a way of life, and I live it every single day. In the corporate and business world, there's so many people unhappy with what they're doing. If they were to shift their mindset, lift their confidence, it would make them more fulfilled in their lives. It would make them a better father, a better husband, a better wife, a better life partner, but most of all, a better human being. Through the amazing experiences I've had and the extraordinary people that I've met, it's helped me be enlightened to my true life's purpose, to help other people realize that they're the captain of their own fate and the master of their own destiny. One of my core values is philanthropy and charity. I sit on the board for Seed Foundation for Indigenous Education and completed the Kokoda Trail in Papua New Guinea last year and raised over $200,000. I'm also a founding member of Project Gen Z, where we go over to Cambodia and work with inspirational and incredible Geraldine Cox with Sunrise Village, Cambodia. The children there have changed my life, given me an amazing perspective and given me a chance to really give back to the world around me. Today, I'm an entrepreneurial leader, a world-class entrepreneur, a global speaker and a world changer. But I'll never forget that I'm just a simple boy from Mooney Ponds trying to get ahead in life. This is my story so far. This is what I'm doing to change the world. But the question is, what are you going to do? I always love seeing, I saw a few of you um, smiling there just then when you see the little photo of me on my dad's lap. That is actually in re regional um, country Victoria. That is in Mildura and Rich River. So uh, I used to go, the, my father's version, I grew up in the service station game and my father worked seven days a week. So my father's version of a family holiday was two days at, at Mildura or Rich River or Yuchuka, Moama. Um, we didn't really get, get very far, but I, uh, I grew up, I've got a lot of family on land and that we're, we're in uh, agriculture and uh, the fruit business. So there is a, a clan of Morellos that um, were in fruit. So I was very, very lucky to be exposed to that. Some of the businesses we've worked with guys, um, we've literally um, touched over a hundred, hundred different um, industries now. So we've gone from everything from, you know, wine to real estate, to consulting, to financial services, to um, marine services, whatever it might be. So we've got a cross reference that you probably recognize some of those brands and we work with them from literally startup and seed um, stage all the way up through to what we call strategy and exit, which I'll go through shortly with you as well. Um, we also work with large groups and government. So uh, we've done a lot of work with um, universities and government and hence this is one of the relationships that we're, we've forged with RDA. And we're looking to expand that relationship right um, throughout Australia as well. Uh, we've got 410,000 um, members in our community. That's people that have gone through um, one of our programs before, been a member of one of our programs or attended one of our events. And we do events now um, in both New Zealand and Australia, but we've actually got um, members from all around the world, which I'll talk about shortly in a moment. So we've got 400 Accelerate and Elevate members. So they're our two membership style of um, products and what we do in our services. And obviously we get to work with those businesses very, very closely as well. We've got 42 full-time staff. Uh, we're in six countries now. Last month, we celebrated the fact that we just signed up our first member in Saudi Arabia, interestingly enough, Saudi Arabia. So it was a big celebration for us now. I love telling this story and we'll, we'll just certainly um, be championing this story. It's a lady who has started a, um, about a year ago, a home delivery, a food home delivery business, pre-COVID, she had already started this so food home delivery business. And it's interesting because in Saudi Arabia, only two years ago, women were not allowed to drive. So she, as soon as she was allowed to drive, 
He has gone and taken her entrepreneurial instinct and then gone and created this. She followed us, um, myself and our, one of our, fa- our co-founder there, Jack DeLosa. He, he found, uh, found, followed both of us and then decided that she uh, wanted to join uh, as a member, which is absolutely fantastic. So we're very, very pleased to have our first Saudi Arabian um, member on board. We have one vision, and that one vision that Jack uh, Delosa, our uh, CEO and founder, who's been on the BMW Young Rich list five times, uh, is co- is authored two best-selling books and co-authored about three or four books as well. Um, he, The vision that we had was that, and write this down, guys, Building a business is a skill. Write that down. Building a business is a skill. And very, if you take away if you take away anything today, it's that building a business is a skill. One of the biggest things that I've seen with people right now, especially coming out of COVID, is that they've had to go and re-skill themselves up. So they've gone, okay, I've done this a particular way for the last three, four, five, 10, 15 years. The reality is, is that what if you've always done what you've always done, you won't always get what you've always gotten anymore. So there's the old adage that if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. It doesn't work anymore. After COVID, if you keep doing the things that you were doing, you're really gonna miss out on a lot of opportunities. And the reality is your competitors in your space are actually doing, are being proactive rather than reactive right now. And you need to take, take advantage of that. I use the analogy often in this scenario, I talk about Tiger Woods. Whether you like him or not, the reality is he's an amazing golfer. And people think he was an amazing golfer because he was naturally talented. The reality is his father had him hitting a thousand golf balls a day since he was a young child, and he still does it to this day. So building a business is a skill, and you can learn how to become a great entrepreneur. And that is the vision that we have. One of the first things we're gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna be um, talking through what we call the five stages of growth. So if you'd like to draw this on your page and then leave some room in each section, in each part, so you'll see in a moment how it starts to come up, we just draw a, a X and Y axis and I'll be giving you the key growth enabler. Write that down underneath the graph. What is the key growth enabler for each stage? So obviously I'm vigilant that some of you are in different stages of your business. So what I'll be doing is talking through the key growth enablers in order for us to come back to you at a later date and in, a, in, a, in, a, in about a half an hour's time, we'll be able to see where that fits for you. So the number one stage in the five stages of growth is student. Like, can anyone, is there anyone wants to take off their mic, I'd love for you to get involved here and, and because I love hearing people's opinions and I learned so much. Yesterday I learned something else. I created this, but I learned something else from one of the people that attended one of our Zooms yesterday. And can anyone tell me in their opinion what they believe the key growth enabler when being a student is during the student phase. So we're kicked off the business. What is the key growth enabler in your opinion? You know, I want to share that. We well, can put it in the chat box, guys, if you want to put it in the chat box. You know, wants to get involved. I think Hitesh might be sending me a message. There we go. Learn from other people's mistakes. Gordon said education, fantastic. Very, very good. So we've hit the nail on the head there, guys. And the beautiful thing about Hitesh's answer is you're right, Hitesh, if you the mistakes get more expensive as we go up on the growth curve here. So you'll see that. So one of the biggest things I explain to people is trying to get the right knowledge early on. So the key growth enabler, write this down, is education, which is what Gordon said, education and environment. Write that down as well, environment. So a number of obviously the business we, businesses we work with in the Accelerate program that we have are in early stages. And some are not in early stages, some are more advanced. But the challenge they've got is there might be a one, two, three, four man team or woman team, I should say. And the problem that you've got with that and the challenge is that often they need that motivation and they need that community and they need that environment to be able to lean against, especially during challenging, challenging times. So the great news was obviously off the back of COVID, we really set ourselves up for success, allowing us to be in a position to be able to work with individuals, but obviously have them into a community where they were being able to interact with other people as well. So the next stage is seed stage. Seed stage. If you want to just pop that in there. Now, can anyone think to be able to tell me what the key growth enabler for seed stage is? Does anyone want to pop that in the chat box or feel free? to take yourself off mute and let me know what do you, and there's no right or wrong answers here guys. Obviously, um, you know, Hitesh said something really, really good before about, you know, learning and learning from mistakes. Like it's, uh, you know, everyone's contribution is valid. If anyone wants to put in what they believe the key growth enabler for seed is, 
and then I will give you how it works with us. So we've gone now and we've got it and gone and educated ourselves. Now, I think you continue, the smart operators will continue to educate themselves. So what I recommend here in seed stage is you need to understand and write this down, your key growth enabler is product to market fit. Write that down, product to market fit. So what that means is often, People are making investments financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically in their business. But what they've done is they've created a product that doesn't actually fit, write this down, the buying cycle of their buyer or their customer or consumer or client. So obviously, we're looking to get product to market fit so we can actually fit that in with our, into the buying cycle of our clientele. The next one I've got there is startup guys. Great, risk and education. I like that, that was for seed, I assume, Gordon. Yep, so mitigating risk. So obviously when you're in seed phase, what we're looking to do is we're looking to mitigate risk and try and reduce the amount of mistakes that we're gonna be making. And then obviously moving into that startup phase now, things can start to get expensive. So we're obviously, the risk of making that mistake or not having the right product to market fit can be quite an expensive process. And, and I've worked with a number of businesses over the years that have gone and done, uh, purchased a, an enormous amount of stock. They're sitting on stock. And you know, as a member I'm currently working with right now, you're sitting on about 300 grand worth of stock in a factory down in Melbourne. And uh, he doesn't know what to do with it. So we've had to recut and re-image and refocus and repurpose his business so that way we can actually have a product to market fit that's gonna fit his, the right consumer, not the consumer he's working with right now. So in startup phase, write this down guys. The key growth enabler, this is a really important one. This is where you 2X to 10X your business, right? Is to build a sales and marketing engine that works without you. To build a sales and marketing engine that works without you. Build a sales and marketing engine that works without you. Wonderful. The next one I've got there is scale. So the important part of that scale, look, the interesting part about these growth enablers is that they actually have a, a necessity all the way through. So it's not solely just at student, you should be educating yourself, you should be educating yourself all the way through. At seed, product to market fit, you should always have some sort of a person, a role, a team, or a unit that is constantly looking at product to market fit and looking to create better programs, create better systems, create better opportunities, better products, better services that your clients or customers are looking to get. And obviously this goes all the way through, but in scale, in scale, the key growth enabler to go from six figures to seven figures or seven figures to eight figures, eight figures and beyond. The key growth enabler is to build structure. Write that down, build structure. Now, obviously what ends up happening is that building structure should be something that we look at even from the outset, but the reality is the opportunity for you to actually spend time in your genius as the visionary and entrepreneur and owner of the business really only generally allows you to do that once we've started to build some revenue. And what actually often happens is, I work with a number of people where they get so bogged down and so stuck in trying to get the structure right, right at the start where they haven't got any revenue coming in the door. So really keen to make sure you've got you know, your sales and marketing right first, get some revenue in the door, then we can always be working on the structure and refine to become more efficient and effective. More efficient and effective. And last but not least, we've got strategy. So once we reach strategy, what I say to people is that it is, it is horses for courses at that point, because obviously a number of you here that are business owners or looking to become business owners, what you'll realize is that your strategy will be different for depending on what business you've got, number one, number two, what stage in your life you're at. So often when we get to this point, we're often talking to people about, is it an exit strategy? Is it they want to sell the whole business? Is it a shares, a, a, um, a staff share offering. So that way you're selling the business to existing staff and you're keeping it in the family. Is it a, a, a profit share, some sort of model where you're doing less hours in the business, but you're still taking dividends from that business? Or are you looking in some cases to publicly list that we've worked with businesses that never even thought they would ever be in a position to publicly list? 
And then we've been able to help them and coach them and advise them into being able to public list their company as well. Anything is possible if you have a plan and a vision for that. Now, the key growth enabler and strategy, though, is a very important thing. Write this down. It's called managing foresight. Managing foresight. Key growth enabler for strategy is managing foresight. Right. So, what we do, I put that up on the board there so we can make reference to it once we're going through now what we call the four levels at which an entrepreneur and their team can operate. So understanding that this could be either yourself as the entrepreneur, but also the people within your team. And if you don't have a team, that's okay. What we should start to do is have the vision of who might be the right person for that role or how do we get that growth out of that role. The whole point of actually defining what is the most important thing that you should be doing in your business and the, effectively what we call the hierarchy of the entrepreneur is so you can spend 100% of your time in your genius. Uh, can, does anyone want to have a go either in the chat box or unmute themselves? Feel free to unmute yourself, guys, and talk me through what they think spending 100% of your time in your genius means. Does anyone want to have a go at that? So obviously what we want you to be doing is focusing on what's going to be the best for your business. Now, obviously, you as an individual, your strength, thank you, Hitesh. Uh, Hitesh has put your strengths. And also importantly on your strengths as well is giving you, freeing you up to do more of what you're amazing at and also allow you to be the visionary for the business as well, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So I've put these up all four so you can write these down. Generally, I'll bring up one at a time. This is, I've brought up all four for you there. So number one is the technician. So the reality is that right now, uh, a lot of people have gone back to technician mode and there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't want you spending a large portion or percentage. We're gonna get, I'm gonna get you to put, these, put a percentage next to these in a moment of where you sit and you can share it if you like, or you don't have to share, it's up to you, but I'd love for you to share it at a minimum in the chat box. So what it is, is that in the technician phase is you're doing the hands-on day-to-day work required to attract and retain customers. So effectively, you're doing all the marketing and you're doing all the sales. The challenge is, is that often if you're doing the marketing and the sales, you're then having to do the product delivery in some way, shape or form as well. And the challenge that you've got with doing that is that obviously it takes up a lot of your time doing the sales and marketing. So we want to free you up at some point, build a, build a marketing and sales funnel that actually just automates itself, which we can, which is very, very possible. Number two is the manager. So overseeing and contributing to work that needs to be done. So obviously now what's happened is we were a one man show or a one person show. We've gone and brought on one or two staff now. We've started being more in the manager role, overseeing maybe our team and understanding that our team is trying to get, we're trying to get the most out of our team. The next level up from that, is leader, transforming strategy into action. It was interesting, I've done a lot of work in Asia and uh, over there people that have, you know, sort of become a technician, stay technician, people who become a manager, stay manager, people that go into leadership, stay in leadership, and then there's the entrepreneurs that always do entrepreneurs and they don't do any of the other work. They seem to have got a down pat in Asia in these larger organizations, they worked it out very, very quickly, even as a entrepreneur and a founder, even when they were bootstrapping and getting off the ground, they always bring in individuals or teams in order to supplement these sections. So transforming strategy into action. Now, you, and then finally as entrepreneur are setting the vision, but often the goal is to, for you to be spending the majority of your time in the entrepreneur and leader phase. What I'd like you to do right now is just on the left-hand side of your page, and then if you can put it in the chat box for me, which would be great, just put E, L, M, and T, and then next to it, just put a percentage of your time that you're spending in your business, spend a percentage of your time that you're spending in your business as the technician, the percentage of your time that you're spending in your business as the manager, the percentage of your time that you're spending in your business as a leader, the percentage of your time that you're spending in your business as an entrepreneur. I want you to just do that activity for me for 30 seconds. Pop it in the chat box for me. I'd love for a few of you to share it, share it with me. Really, really important for you to start to get an idea and an understanding of who you are as an entrepreneur and as a business owner as well. Excuse me. Just 
you want to pop that into the just the percentage of the hardest part of doing this activity guys is actually making sure that it all adds up to 100 because it is 100 percent so uh the, yesterday in the session someone put 60 percent um technician and then they put 20 20 20 and i explained to them that that it will add it up to 120. so just i won't make fun of you if you do but i'd love for you to put in so um, gordon's put there spending 20 percent as entrepreneur 15 percent of the time as leader 25 percent of the time as manager and 40 percent of the time as technician fantastic thank you very much at this stage on a one man band no worries gordon but we can look to change that as well and then we've got itesh itesh has mentioned there that he's got doing 20 percent of the time entrepreneur 20 percent of the time leader uh, 10 percent of the time manager and and 50 percent of the time in technician so good cross reference there but obviously with both um you gentlemen we'd love to shift uh, some of that weight from that technician phase and move you up the ladder as fast as possible and there are certainly many strategies and opportunities to do that feel free for anyone else to pop their details in as well to put some of that in there so obviously when we're doing these percentages i've got on you today thank you kerry so 70 percent manager 10 percent technician a 15 percent leader and five percent is entrepreneur wonderful so good cross reference as well so it, it, and probably kerry's is a beautiful example and I appreciate your honesty there kerry is that eventually at some point we literally want to flip it on its head and we want those numbers to be completely the other way we'd love for you to be spending 50 percent of your time uh 70 percent of your time in that entrepreneur phase so what we're looking at here guys is this is your what we call your current state write this down this is my current state one of your projects and, and activities i'd love for you to do not now but over the next 24 hours is I'd love for you to either print this out and you can, if you email me and during the business growth strategy session, I can actually give you a copy of this. And then what I'd love for you to do is actually have what I call, what is my future state? Write that down. What is my future state? So, and then actually understanding, is it a 12 month, 24 month, 36 month plan in order for us to be able to flip that on its head and reweight those? It doesn't mean I don't want you doing, I want you doing zero technician. No, I'm in technician phase today. So obviously dealing, working with you guys, I'm delivering content today because I love delivering content. I'm not here because I have to do it. I have a team of, of 40 staff that can do this, right? But I love doing it because the reality is I get to connect and especially with the regional or rural areas, I feel really that I can make a, a vast contribution. So what you wanna be doing is seeing for yourself how you can change the weight of that. So from, from current to future state. So the next thing I'm gonna get you to do guys, I'm gonna bring it up on the, on the, I'll bring them up one by one, but if you wanna draw yourself this circle or to make it easier, how I often do it, so I actually just draw it across the top of the page. We're gonna go through the six elements of business. Six elements of business. So, if you add a home in the office, what generally works well is to make yourself six columns. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the six elements across the top. Or if you want to, if you're good at drawing circles, I can't draw circles, guys. I'm just honest. I can't draw circles. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the six elements of business. And I'm going to get you guys to identify, I'm going to give you some content around those. I'm going to get you to identify which element or elements are your strengths and which elements are your weaknesses and understanding that we have growth enablers in each as well. So what I might even do to make it easier, I'll pop them all up there for you so you can draw that. So number one is marketing. Okay, I'll start with these three first. Okay, number one is marketing. Now under marketing, in those columns, I'll give you the enablers under that. Number one is that you need to have a digital marketing strategy. Digital marketing strategy. Write that down, digital marketing strategy. And under that subheading of digital marketing strategy, you should be looking at things such as email marketing, and also having a nurture sequence for each 
of your, what we call client avatars, having a nurture sequence for each of your client avatars. And we'll go through that a little bit later on as well, how those nurture sequences work. Number two under marketing is we should have a social media marketing strategy. Doesn't matter what business you're in, the reality is you've got everybody now is on social media. And we're going to talk about the importance of social media a little bit later on and some of the facts and figures. But the reality is you need to have these in line and understanding that you need a social media marketing strategy. Number three is you need to have an overall marketing strategy, overall marketing strategy. The reason why having an, in this, your overall marketing strategy can be something that is what I call medium to long term. So what you're aiming towards, then obviously the levels and the steps are setting up a good digital marketing strategy and a good nurture sequence and setting up our social media marketing. So obviously we can leverage into an overall marketing strategy a lot quicker. So the second one I put there is sales. Sales. So right under sales, eight steps to sales mastery. Eight steps to sales mastery. So at the entourage, we've put together a, a, a eight steps to sales mastery. It's basically a template where what you do is you fill it in to make it relevant to your individual business. So you fill it in to make it relevant to your individual business. So make sure, you know, there's an opportunity for you to obviously in the business growth strategy session, and I can go through that eight steps with you and you can take that framework. But understanding that there needs to be a system and a process in order to get the most out of your strategy as well. Now, number two for sales is what is your buying cycle? Write that down. What is your buying cycle? What is your buying cycle? And last but not least is who is my client avatar? Who is my client avatar? Right. The third part of it there is product. Now, the number one key enabler under the element of product is product to market fit, which we spoke about before. So product to market fit, number one. Number two is innovation. Innovation. And number three under product is market feedback. So for some businesses that are on here, that could be net promoter score surveys, uh, that could be uh, a, 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 some sort of a, a feedback opportunity um, on a quarterly basis, half yearly basis, annual basis. If you're delivering a project, if you're a project-based business or an individual-based business, but we're at the entourage, we do it every three months. Every three months, every member is sent a net promoter, a, an anonymous net promoter score survey. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a net promoter score is, you should delve into it, but just quickly, that's your NPS score, your net promoter score. It goes from a minus 100 up to a minus plus 100. To give you a bit of an idea, McDonald's has a, a net promoter score of plus 14 because they sell the most burgers in the world, but they sell the worst burgers in the world. Um, but to give you a bit of an idea, like Apple has a net promoter score of like plus 72. We've got a net promoter score at the entourage of plus 54, 55. It's not good enough for us. It's very good in the world of international business, but it's not good enough for us. We want to, we, we have a vision. We can be better than Apple. Why can't, why can't people in the world of business education have a better experience than Apple? Uh, are you talking about the business buying cycle or client buying cycle? Very good question, Gordon. Thank you very much. I am talking about the customer, so the client buying cycle. Client buying cycle. Thank you for your question there. Now, guys, what I'd like you to do with these three here, I want you to connect it right here. Those three into what we call the visionary. These three here, the marketing, sales, and products and products is something that the visionary, and write that down, because we're going to be talking about visionary versus integrator in a little while, and understanding that each of them are just as important as each other. And sometimes the biggest glass ceiling for an entrepreneur or business owner is they are either too much of a visionary or too much of an integrator, and they don't actually have somebody to complement that skill set for them. So very, very important. So we'll put the last three up on the board now. People. 
finance, operations. So under people, under people, I'd love for you to put the key growth enabler under people is finding the right people. Put that down, finding the right people. And then the next part is to write understanding your human capital. It's a concept that a lot of people don't work on, but understanding your human capital. Understanding your human capital. So often people think they need more money to do more marketing, or they need more people in order to get, the, to get, to get more sales done. The reality is, is that you need the right people to fit the right, right positions. The last part there is right highest and best use, or abbreviated as HBU, highest and best use. Often when we start working with individuals or, or companies, what we find is when we get to this element, the fourth element in the six elements, they're in no particular order, but the fourth element in the six elements, what happens is, is that often people uh, in, within their organizations aren't doing what they enjoy doing, and often there's an opportunity. So to give you a bit of an idea, there's a lady that we work with named uh, Frances Quinn. She has a company called Athena Consulting. Um, we took her business from four staff up to 12 staff including four salespeople then. The reality was she was doing a million dollars worth of sales, but she was doing all the selling, and then she wasn't being freed up to work on the business. So what we've done is we've worked with her for the last three, just under three years now, but in her 11th month working with her, she had a million dollar month. The key growth enabler for that was people. Explaining this to you. So we built a marketing strategy for her. She never marketed. We helped her build the eight steps to sales mastery, and we presented it to the whole team. Now, the top two salespeople that she's got now were never in sales before. They were in delivery of their consulting, right? So IT consulting. Now, the reason being, because we showed them that there was a very simple, easy to follow system that was very replicable, re replicatable, and also gave them an opportunity to be able to learn it very easy. And if they followed those eight steps, they got a result. So we had a young girl who was working in the business in her early 20s who actually said, wait a minute, you're telling me if I follow those eight steps, I'm going to get a result. I said, yes, of course. That's the whole point of the eight steps to sales mastery. And so what she did is she goes, I would, I, she put her hand up. She goes, I would like to volunteer in order to move myself and progress myself in my own career. So what she was able to do off the back of that was actually become one of the top salespeople in her early 20s. She's been with the business now. She's in her mid-20s, she's been with the business for four years. She wasn't in sales before. She's been in sales for the last two years. And she's pretty much 2x and 3x her own personal income because now she's moved into an, a revenue-reducing opportunity. But we would never have noticed that if we didn't know what people's highest and best use was. And we hadn't created a very easy system uh, in, in, in sales and marketing that she could follow. And she's followed it now. She has the discipline to follow that and she's getting the results. The next one I've got there is finance. So under finance, I want you to write have a knowledge of your magic metrics. Have a knowledge of your magic metrics. Now, on a PL, there are going to be magic metrics that are common in all businesses. For example, if you want to write these down, cost per lead, otherwise known as CPL. So cost per lead. The next one you might want to write as a magic metric is cost per acquisition. So known as CPA, so cost per acquisition. So understanding that we're looking to build our sales funnel, how much is it gonna cost us to bring those opportunities in the door? So obviously we, we might be bringing people in the door at a cost per, cost per lead of $50 a lead, or $10 a lead, or $20 a lead, whatever it might be. This is you taking your whole uh, budget, marketing budget and dividing it by the amount of opportunities that you get to speak to. Then cost per acquisition is you taking your whole marketing budget and dividing it by the actual amount of customers that now have purchased from you. Are the customers that have purchased from you or have engaged in your services? Engaged in your services. So some other magic metrics might include obviously expenses, uh, understanding you know, what your cash flow model is. And the last part under finance is having a cash floor. 
So a cash floor is generally, my rule of thumb, is three months operating costs and giving ourselves a buffer to have three months operating costs put away. So that way we're not in a position where we are doing things out of being desperate, but what we're doing is we're actually focusing on how do we build that cash flow to give us breathing space in order to achieve the best results. Right. Last but not least, we've got operations. So at this point with operations, yes, we should be going back to, uh, you know, our existing operations and existing system as a process, right the, under these systems and processes. And also under operations, it is at this point, once we're, we're really deep diving into operations, we are looking to reverse engineer how to become, write this down, more efficient and more effective. How to become more efficient and more effective. Now, shortly I'm gonna show you a video of a husband and wife combo that we work with. Uh, Robbie and Tamara Turner, based up in Queensland. They have a property business where they sell properties and work with and build and build new homes for defense force people. Robbie had come from 30 years in the defense force. He, they had, an, of this own admission, husband and wife combo. They also were business partners. Their marriage was on the rocks because of the business. And obviously that is always a sad thing that the business shouldn't come first, that the marriage should come first. So what we worked out with them was actually understanding that who was the visionary and who was the integrator. I talked about marketing sales and product was under visionary. So obviously the other side of that, finance, someone asking a question? Someone asking a question, so I can just see someone coming through. So the other side of that, people finance and operations falls under what we call integrator. 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 So we have, we have visionary, we have integrator. Now in the early days, sorry guys, I think someone, you might need to mute yourself if you're not saying anything. You want to say something guys, feel free to chime in, but I'm, I'm just getting a bit of feedback from somebody that's on online. Obviously it's helping. So understanding that marketing sales product falls under visionary, People finance operations falls under integrator. Now the other side of understanding that is that in the beginning, you might be doing everything. Now let me give you a few examples of visionary and integrator. Visionary could be, you could be doing everything right now, but obviously you might go, I love working on the marketing, the sales, the product, the market fit, the stuff that's exciting and that's fun. Ironically, there are people that actually love working on the people, the finance and the operations. Our general manager is the ex-general manager at, at the entourage, the ex-general manager of Uber Australia. We stole him from Uber Australia. His name is Tim Morris, right? And he's our general manager. He's Jack and I's integrator. So he's very good at overseeing these people, finance and operations, and taking those day-to-day -day things that bog us down and we don't find exciting, and allowing Jack and I to focus on working on the marketing, sales, and product to market fit, allowing us to innovate, allowing us to go and put together content, put together presentations like this, and actually deliver what we enjoy doing and helping actual business owners achieve great results and move forward, right? Does everyone, does everyone like this, by the way? Can I get a thumbs up just from those who are not interacting? So thumb up, thanks, Anna. I've got a, yep, great. Sally, fantastic, great. All right, I'm on the right page then. Wonderful. Everyone's finding this useful. We're getting it. Okay. Now I'm feeling happy. Wonderful. All right. So let me give you the next part of this here, guys. So I'm going to show you an example of um, Robbie and Tamara shortly. But what I want to do is do a, give you, the, and once again, in the business growth strategy session, all of our templates are available to you. So if you want to get a copy of these templates, all we do is at the end, we'll book the a business growth strategy session. It's complimentary for 90 minutes. And we can obviously give you, a, you can leave with all of these templates in place. I want to talk about the four futures here, right? So the four futures are really, really important. So this is something I created in order for people to understand about that more is lost with indecision than wrong decision and drawing a line in the sand. So let me explain to you when I said before that if you've always done what you've always done, you won't always get what you've always got it. So the, the time has changed and that now it does not work like that anymore. So the red line there is the fact that more that if you don't make any changes right now, and especially because business is being done different. So for example, if you've always been 
a retail or a face-to-face um, provider of some sort of service or product, the challenge you've got, if you haven't pivoted into the online space, if you're not providing some sort of um, opportunity for people to be able to engage with you digitally, then obviously that red line is where you're going to be. The orange line is that you start to make some change, but the changes you make aren't necessarily the most efficient and effective changes that you're supposed to make. This generally comes from, from a lack of education, not from a lack of trying. So the orange is, ob- is often from uh, Rachel. I'm just going to mute you, sorry. I think that was you that was coming up. So what, what it is, is the orange line is that you've started to make some changes, but you're not making the right changes because you haven't sought the right advice and you haven't sat with the right educated people, haven't got the right mentors, you haven't gone to the right uh, advisors, you haven't spoken to the right accountant, you haven't spoken to the right you know, um, marketing experts, you haven't spoken. And what happens is, is you go, okay, I know I need to make change. I know I need to pivot my business from face-to-face and put it into online. But the reality is I've just gone and spent X amount of dollars and I'm not getting a, ra- a return on my investment. But then you wonder why you've done, why that's happened. It's often you haven't got, bless you by the way, Kim, uh, often you haven't, haven't had an opportunity to get the right advice at that point. Uh, Kim, no worries. Leo will give you my email. Leo, if you just want to send uh, Kim that email, she can um, speak directly to you and I to catch up. The white line is what I call the line in the sand, guys. This is the line in the sand. It's you've made the decision that now you're going to be the captain of your own fate and the master of your own destiny. But obviously, you're going to want to do that in order to get a result. You need to put the right things in place. And then now you've started to put the right things in place. You've invested money into the right marketing places, whether that's digitally, whether that's um, social media, whether it's Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Instagram. What we've done is we've secured and defined who your client avatar is, and we've reverse engineered our marketing strategy based off who our client avatar is to make sure that we, and also we've developed the right product to market fit so then we can then market that product to the right people. So we're not wasting our money. We're not putting it in the wrong direction. So that's that yellow line. And the green line is what I like to call the, 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 the blue sky option. So I say to people, you should be shooting for the green line. Aim for the star, aim for the moon, aim for the stars. And if you hit the moon, it's a bonus, right? The reality is, is this growth curve is a what we call a three-year, write this down, what is my three-year north star? One of the first things that I work with you on in the business growth strategy session is what is my three-year North Star? What is my three-year North Star? But off the back of the three-year North Star, what we put together is we put together a 12-month operational plan and a 90-day action plan. So we go from, that's what we want in three years' time, but what do we need to do over the next 12 months that is pertinent to myself and my business? And then last but not least, obviously, what are we going to do in order to make those make the 12 month plan a reality and that three year North Star reality is what are the actions I need to take over the next 90 days? And probably your first 90 days from when you make this decision are the most important. That's a reality because it sets the temperature gauge or it sets the, the gauge obviously right through and through, through and beyond over those um, 12, 24, 36 months. Now, those boxes on the right hand side, how do they work? In the money section, you should be putting in net profit before tax. So that is net profit before tax. If anyone doesn't know what net profit before tax is, you can speak to Kerry Davis. I'm sure she'll talk to you about your net profit before tax. But I'll, I'll give it a, and Kerry, don't judge me. I'll give it a, uh, a, a basic version. So your net profit before tax is, let's say your business for round numbers makes $200,000 a year. Let's say after you pay for all of your staff, your, your rent, whatever it might be, your costs and, and your cost of goods and your products and your product delivery. Once you do all of that, you might have $50,000 left over. So here's the challenge. At that point, if you ever paid yourself a wage, your net profit before tax is $50,000, which just means you've worked very hard, you've, you've brought in $200,000 worth of revenue, but you've only actually personally made $50,000. Now, they, if you've got an investor, obviously, as a business owner, you need to pay your investors first before you pay yourself often, right? So the old concept is that you may need, if you're a one or two or three man show and you're starting out, no worries, great. But understanding that what we're trying to do is build a business that is right this down, scalable and saleable. 
You know, I'm sure when Kerry as a CPA looks at a business profitability and looks at the business valuation, if one of her clients comes to her and says, uh, I assume Kerry, sorry, I apologize. Is Kerry a female? I, sh- I assume, sorry, I should have been presumptuous of that. It's a male and female name. But when Kerry works with a client, that obviously if they've got, they're making $50,000 in net profit before tax, often in a lot of cases, and every every industry is different, and, and I know that, but often in a lot of cases, that might mean that it's got a valuation of a two times multiple, three times multiple, four, five, whatever times multiple on the net profit before tax. But what I want you to do is I want you to be build, working towards building a business where you've actually got, so you might put in now that red line for you, you might be saying, look, the business made 150 grand last year and I made no money. I don't know how it happened. People go to me, I don't understand how it happens. And then one of the first things I do is I get them to pull out their peanut. And we start to go through line by line, understanding what it is that's costing them the money and trying to find opportunities to help them there. So in the money section, you're putting net profit before tax. Now in the time section, you're putting what is, uh, do you want to, Leah, do you want to send Sally my email address? Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Appreciate that. In the time section, we want to be putting there, what is my, how many days a week I'm working in the business? So what this means is as an entrepreneur, you may often be going, okay, I am speaking to, I'm, I'm, I'm working, you know, entrepreneurs always say this to me, I'm working in the business seven days a week. I said, fantastic, right? But, you know, I mean, working in the business rather than on the business. So what that means is if you're in the business in three years time, five to seven days a week, you've built a bad business. The business should run without you, right? But I understand you might want to be there one to three days or three to four days. And then maybe you want to spend a day a week being that visionary that we spoke about before the, in the hierarchy of entrepreneurs, where you can actually spend a day a week literally focusing on your business, on your business, not in your business. And so what that means is right now in that section, in the, in the, in the red box, you might put six to seven days a week. In the orange box, you might put five to six days a week. In the yellow box, you might put four to five days a week. Now, I know I'm in the green box right now. So Jack and myself can spend two, three days a week working on building ideas and what are, you know, what, what's going to benefit the business, understanding you know, what's happening in the industry right now, going to educate ourselves. Jack and myself, between the two of us, spend a half a million dollars a year between the two of us on educating ourselves and our teams. So, you know, I work with a $500 an hour business business coach for that particular reason. Here we fully agree with the cash flow, and I'm not continually surprised how a lot of people do not integrate cash flow, p and and balance sheet. I agree, Kerry. It's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Oh, sorry. That was from Gordon. Kerry is a female in this case. Cash flow is important as profit, uh, profit in my experience. Fantastic. Great. I love the chat that's going on, guys. Feel free to, uh, to chime in at any time. Especially Kerry, if you're an expert in this space, feel free to try and eat, try and eat. If you've got that CPA next to your name, oh, you obviously know a lot better than I do. Um, and Gordon, feel free to, to, to come in as well. Now, the last part is lifestyle. Now, one of the reason why I put lifestyle here is some people join the entourage uh, or work with us in an advisory space. And you know what they say to me? They say, I actually don't want to sell my business. I love my business. I just want to make it so that way I can spend more time with my children. I said, fantastic. So what does that mean? They go, I want to be open five to seven days a week, but I never. I only want to work five days a week and I want to be able to finish at work at three o'clock every day and go pick up my kids. I said, fantastic. So why don't we reverse engineer off the back of that? So even in the lifestyle box, in that, that third section of the white box there, you can put it in, what is the lifestyle that you're looking to aspire to? So it might be having, uh, being able to pick up my children. Um, the, the yellow box will be maybe being able to take a, you know, a one month holiday every year. The orange box will be, it's a reality, and it's a reality check for you. And if you don't make those changes, it's going to be working seven days a week. Or at the, the red one, it's going to be working, you know, six, seven days a week and not making any money. And that's a reality for a lot of people right now. So you really need to be the captain of your own fate, the master of your own destiny, and make that decision to actually move forward and actually make the implement the right strategies that are going to be successful for your business. So this is Robbie and Tamara. If you want your business to grow, it's a no-brainer. The business now basically operates when we're not there.
Yeah, I certainly knew um, before joining the entourage um, because we started the business at home, husband and wife living at home, the business was being run at home, there were no boundaries, there were no lanes that we can operate in. Best friends, husband and wife were starting to come to a business and we're like, at loggerheads all, all the time. Yeah. Just um, just learning to have to stay out of each other's lanes was we didn't know that was yeah. that was what we needed. Uh, we just knew that we needed help. We needed help to uh, to work better and to start to grow our business in the right direction. didn't even like remain together like it got that dire it got to that point I'm like you know we really do need some assistance I guess just to identify what Tamara's really good at in the business I'm not good at and what I do in the business that's not her specialty either so I guess it's just understanding that um, you know certainly the coaching from the entourage allowed us to learn and understand that it's okay to think differently about business ideas I'd have a certain idea about something and Tamara would come in and go well, why are we going to do it that way? And I'm like, why are you being so negative about stuff? I couldn't quite realise why she actually wasn't being negative. She was being the reality check of what I was trying to do from a business growth perspective. Yeah. So uh, the entourage kind of taught us that Robbie is more the visionary and I'm the integrator in the business. So it was also learning how to use language that wasn't um, that would be effective as well. So for, for things where we would come up with these grand scale ideas of we need to do this, 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 and before I'd be like, oh, that's a crazy idea. Whereas um, now it's like, okay, let me have a look at it. Let me let's see how this works. And um, I'm looking at how many staff do we need? How much money do we need? It, it comes from a more logical place. Uh, the growth that we've experienced before joining the entourage, I, I went and did a boardroom session with Jack and Pete and it was just myself and Tamara and one other person working in the business. Uh, so that was about nine months ago and now we've got eight people working in the business. So we've basically you know, quadrupled the, the number of people that work in the, in the business but of course the effect that that's had is that the now and the, the systems and the training that we put in place with our team is that Tamara and I are now able to go and do things that we, you know, we find beneficial. We went for a short trip overseas for instance and because we've got systems and processes in place and we've got the right team members in place the business now basically operates when we're not there. We've gone from Robbie being key to person dependent and not being able to even have a holiday not being able to leave the business to now um, people our clients are getting helped when we're not even there and it's, it's amazing it's yeah, amazing. It's really, we helped about 35 people our sort of key um, key avatar clients there find a property and build a property with them and now we're not even halfway through this year and we've already helped about 40 people so that's you know that's been a huge growth there's a future path ahead it's not we're not playing small anymore I think when your relationship is on track then it ripples out to every other area in your business your friendships your other family members um, just your, your work environment the, mm. the, the, the connections you have with your team um, when you've got the, your personal stuff sorted, um, it, it, yeah, ripple effect to our business and I think we've seen that so much growth because of having that stability there. I guess as you guys realise when, when a business owner puts so much time and effort and an emotional capital into starting a business from scratch, from nothing, to now to the fact that the business is now sort of two and a half years old and we've got that 100% surety and we know the longevity is going to be good, then I guess it's, it's, it's actually making us feel really excited about what the next few years are going to hold for us. If people are sitting on the fence about joining the entourage, is just do it. Just get in there, immerse yourself with the, the people, the, the tribe that, are, that Jack has created is like no other. Robbie and Tamara Turner, is they certainly wear their heart on their sleeves there. And the beautiful part about that is when we talked about visionary and integrator, understanding that both parties and individuals do things better individually and have what we call once again your highest and best use. So um, we're going to have that conversation right through uh, this session and also in the uh, in the one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions as well that we're going to be later on. So next we're going to talk about guys the digital marketing landscape. So um, can I get in the chat box? Can everyone, or even just give me a thumbs up if everyone's, do, if you're doing digital marketing and social media marketing yet, like if you are. If you're currently doing it, great. So we've got 
one thumbs up. Just get a bit of an idea who's currently doing it in some way, shape, or form. Social media, they're great. Another thumbs up there. That's from Sue, Siri. Thank you, Sue. So there's a few of you that are currently doing it, but certainly, obviously, there's a massive opportunity there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through how we do some of it, but also I'm going to give you some a bunch of information so you've got a bit of an idea of best how this works. And then what we can do, uh, great, great. So Cameron Little, yes, currently, uh, and Tanya Cole, great. Beautiful. So a few more of you are doing it. Great. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through the different media because everyone's got a different business on here, right? So unless it's a one-on-one -on -one business growth strategy session, I, I can't you know, cater to everyone in one go. I'm going to give you an overarching macro view of the digital marketing landscape. And then obviously in our one-on-one -on -one business growth strategy sessions, we can, you can talk me through what you're currently doing and we can also talk about what might be useful to apply into that as well. Now, all this data as well in the business growth strategy session will be available to you too. So um, if you do, everyone loves this data. This is all current data as well that we've been able to acquire um, and get as well. So obviously 70% of uh, consumers that follow a social media brand, a brand on social media, are more likely to buy the brand over another brand. So we see this with the entourage. So we ran a, a, an event um, a week and a half ago called Reboot. We had two and a half, 2,400 people log on from all around the world. And uh, it, it, ironically, 80% of them saw it, so this is 77%, 80% of them saw it through our social media, through our social media. So you'll see on our social media that um, you'll see myself, you'll see Jack. Um, we do what a thing, what I like to call, and write this down, we educate and we entertain. Educate and entertain. What I mean by that is we've come, and this is trademark pending Andrew Morello, by the way, I've called it edutainment. So the whole idea of it is that we're trying to create a following and give people as much content as possible. So you look at our social medias and you look at the things that we're providing our community is that often it is um, in some way, shape or form, giving them more and more value. So that way they position and positions us as a brand, as the entourage, as a value-based business. So that's what we're aiming to do. And it was interesting, we, the, the, the overall statistic internationally, 77%. And when we did reboot a week and a half ago, the 2,400 people, we always get them to fill in where they came from. And the 2,400, 80% of them came from social media. 60% of, 67% of consumers are more likely to increase their spending with a brand that they follow on social media. Now, here is the trick to this. So the little note that I need to give you on this is, and, and mind my language here, I'm going to give it to you in plain terms, is don't flog them shit. That's the reality. Don't flog them stuff, right? So one of the biggest challenges is that people just start flogging and flogging and trying to sell them. What we're trying to do at this point and what our main focus is at, at this area when we're trying to then get build a following there and build an audience is we're trying to get them to interact. And we don't want to go write this down. Don't go into selling mode. Don't go into selling mode. Because what happens is people go, okay, great. I've got... 2,000 followers now, I've got 3,000 followers, I've got 5,000 followers. And then what they're doing is they're going on a constant basis and a barrage trying to get people to always buy something. What we want to do is we want to educate, entertain, and then offer what we call a call, write this down, a call to action. We want to offer a call to action. That can be done via a thing called a lead magnet, that can be done via a, uh, a webinar, that can be done via a, a $7 um, you know, what we did is we had 2,400 people log on for Reboot and then for $7, they could buy the recording of Reboot. Now, that only cost us a couple of grand to film it and get it made. It was a full day presentation and obviously people couldn't stay for eight hours. So they logged on, logged off, logged on, logged off. So everybody that attended was offered to pay $7 and they could get recorded. We sold 400 of those. Did we make a lot of money from them? No. But what we've done is we've now got them in our nurture sequence and they're in our buying cycle. So now what they're doing is they're buying from us. They bought a $7 product. The next thing they might buy is a program of some sort. And the next thing they might buy is a, is a membership. So obviously they get them, they go through the buying cycle. So I'm going to give you some numbers pretty quickly here. So if you do want this data, I can provide you this data in the business growth strategy session as well. So this is all current data. So Facebook's got 2.4 billion users. Now, Everybody should have a Facebook page. Now, two things you can do. You could have one uh, Facebook page for yourself and then a Facebook page for your business. Now, understanding, and very important here, if you have a personal Facebook page, you should be vigilant about the content that you're putting on it. 
One of the first things I do when I meet somebody or I'm doing a business growth strategy session or someone joins the entourage, the first thing I do is I click and I go and see their personal Facebook page. It shouldn't have you running around, drinking, smoking, things of that nature. It needs to be very clean cut and understand that you are a personal brand that people are attaching to your business brand. The important thing is Facebook. Now, also the other thing is as well, is understanding that Facebook ads have become, in some cases, in some industries, more favorable than Google AdWords and Google Ads these days. So Facebook is the underdog right now in that world. They're not much of an underdog, a multi-billion dollar company, but they're the underdog right now that are actually trying to um, take some of that market share from Google and they're doing some amazing work in their advertising space. But the trick obviously is having an understanding of who your client avatar is and having Facebook as an overall arching part of your marketing strategy. YouTube. Now, what I'd love for you to do, you saw my, my show reel video at the start, I'd love for you to go subscribe for my channel later. I've only just set it up a couple of weeks ago, and I would, about a month ago now. I would love for you to go onto YouTube. Maybe Leo can put the link in the, yep, in the link in the, in the chat. And I'd love for you to subscribe to the things that I'm going to be putting up there. So, obviously, I've started putting some old videos up there, but we're always looking to bring out content. They've got 1.9 billion users. And once again, YouTube has got a really, really smart about some of their data settings. And what they're being able to do now is now that they're getting people signed up on their subscription models, they've got a lot of data about how you can get to exactly who the right person is. And hence, if you clicked on my show reel in my YouTube channel, it wouldn't be odd for you to get some sort of advertisement about the entourage over the next week or so. And that's called targeted remarketing. Write that down, guys. Targeted remarketing. And once again, we can delve into exactly what targeted remarketing you're doing. But obviously, that is the next level of getting, making sure that you're making the most of the opportunities that you've got. WhatsApp. WhatsApp's become something. Uh, look, what I'll do here, I haven't put one up there, but if you're in the business where you do work with the Chinese community, the other one on, on, on the other side of WhatsApp is WeChat. So write that down. I don't have a slide for it, but WeChat. Obviously, I've been presenting these slides, uh, this particular data, over the last month. And a number of the feedback I've been getting in, in um in the comments is that oh, I'm in the, I do a lot of business with China or I do a lot of business with um, Australian Chinese community and they're getting a lot of traction out of WeChat right now. But WhatsApp, we've got 1.5 billion users. Now, Instagram. Now, I was a late adopter with Instagram. I wasn't a fan of it initially. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was for kids. I thought there wasn't any use to it. And the reality is this. Let me give you a couple of framings here. Facebook has now become the, the adult version Right? So like what's happened is a lot of kids now have gotten off Facebook because they're like their mums, their dads, their aunties. My mother and father have Facebook. You can add them. My dad's on there. John Morello Senior or John G. Morello. I think he's got it. My mum's Pauline Morello. Right? They've got their own Facebook page now. So what's happened is a lot of the younger generations, so if you're in a business where your client avatar is, is uh, you know, teenagers or young adults, then obviously you need to definitely be on Instagram. So Instagram is younger, but Obviously, now with the push for what they call business pages, there is a real opportunity to be able to get some leverage out of Instagram. We get a lot of success out of Instagram with the work and the demographics of the people that we use. Um, and now, interestingly enough, fun fact, for those of you who don't know, Facebook actually now owns Instagram. They bought it for a billion dollars when it was making zero profit. It's an interesting valuation. But also as well, Facebook has also bought WhatsApp. So all of a sudden, you got all these channels, they're going to, go, going to start speaking to each other. And all that data that they're collecting, obviously, they reckon on average, Facebook has a million points of data on every person that's, that uses one of their products. So on average, a million points of data. It's, it's crazy, but it's the new world of data. But Twitter. Now, I'm on Twitter. I don't necessarily, it's not a big thing in Australia. Where you need definitely need Twitter is if you are going to move into the US market or anywhere in sort of North America, you definitely need Twitter. If you're looking to, so to give you an idea, literally yesterday, yesterday afternoon, we just signed up a, uh, a, a young, not young, she's a, a, a lady, uh, 39, very successful. She owns a company called ilovedrift.com.au. And you're probably wondering, what is drifting? This is a young lady who's, uh, she's a drift um, racing champion. It's a, a Japanese style of racing cars where you slide the car sideways along the street. And this girl's based in Melbourne, in Moorabbin. Now, she heard the, the big win that she's had recently. She's gone and taken a drop shipping uh, facility in Indiana for her products. So if you want to check her out, she's one of our latest members. Her name's Catherine May, and, and you can 
reach out to her and say that I gave her a big call out, but she was, isn't doing anything on Twitter right now. The reality is in America is a very big space. So that is part of now her social media, media marketing strategy that we will be helping her implement through me being an authorized Accelerate member. Uh, LinkedIn. So the great news about LinkedIn is that it's now gotten uh, some really good, what we call auxiliary sales assisting products, auxiliary sales assisting products. Um, if, give me a thumbs up if you're on LinkedIn currently. Give me a thumbs up if you're on LinkedIn. Yep, thanks Anna. Great, Tanya's on it. Everyone's, yep, great, Kirsten. Give me a thumbs up if you're on LinkedIn. I'll tell you why, great, Sue, thank you very much. So the reason being, write this down, you wanna go and get yourself a thing called Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator, we use it. So I'll explain to you Sales Navigator on LinkedIn. It's probably got the best, one of the best um, uh, sales assisting and, and programs that I've ever seen. It's about, I think Leo recruitment for $90 a month. Is that right for a single user? Yeah, it's $90 a month for a single user, which is very, very cheap in my opinion. But effectively, let me give you a bit of an idea and uh, of how it works. So what happens is, Let's say I want to promote my services for doing videography to, um, to real estate agents, right? Let's say I live in Orange. Let's say perfect, the perfect, you guys are a perfect example. What I might do is I might go on Sales Navigator and type in real estate principals and directors. So that's going to give me, say, 10,000 real estate, 10,000 people's details. Then what I, it is, I might want to then refine it to New South Wales. Right, so it refines it to New South Wales, that might reduce it down to 3,000. Then I might want to reduce it down to a particular group of postcodes. So let's say Central Western New South Wales. So we'll reduce it back down again. So that, then it might come to um, 1,000 contacts. But then you, what you might want to do is say, I just want to speak to the business owner only. Maybe it's giving you all real estate. Do you want to speak? So you say, I just want to speak to the owner, CEO, general manager. So you can refine it again. And it might give you a list of say 400 and you've got their LinkedIn profiles, you've got all of their details, you've got their business name, you can do your research and build a prospecting list off the back of that. They're the next 400 people you should be calling to provide your videography services to local real estate offices in the, um, in the, you know, uh, in, the in the central western district of New South Wales. So it will refine them. It's $90 a month, unlimited. It's one of their newest products and it's absolutely fantastic. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Last but not least, I put Snapchat on there. The reason why I put Snapchat is because it does have a growing data use. I don't use Snapchat. I don't. Um, I think if you have a product or a service that engages with young people, so the younger community, I think you need to have Snapchat these days. That's a reality, right? So if you are engaging in um, in anyone sort of sub 18, if your product is, is appealing to that, even if it's the mother or father that is the client avatar, it's really important conversation to have. So often what happens is, is that people think, okay, my client is, is you know, teenagers, and I explain to them, no, it's actually mums and dads. So you need to be really vigilant about what kind of content you're putting out there and what kind of what kind of things you're putting out there because you don't want to be offending the actual person who's going to put the money in your bank account and their bank account. Last but not least, I've got Pinterest here. I'd, once again, I don't use Pinterest, but a number of our um, members at the Entourage do, the Accelerate members, a number of them that are in uh, interior decorating, um, some that are in the art space, uh, they use Pinterest and they get a lot of traction out of it. So. Feel free. So you can see there, there's the breakup, average visit, duration, 14 minutes. Uh, the average, you see you've got all of the data, so you can start to make a bit of a, um, a marketing strategy that is gonna be really specific and really engaging of your, what we call your client avatar, so then you can get them into your client buying cycle, client buying service cycle. Um, okay, here's some interesting facts. People spent two hours, at the, this is since COVID by the way as well. This is new data, two hours a day watching broadcast TV, 36 minutes a day reading print media, 50 minutes a day listening to a podcast, the radio. Um, we've got six and a half hours a day on the internet between their computer and their phone device, they're spending six and a half, uh, six and a half hours a day on the internet. A large portion of that is social media. I can't give you the specific data on that, but you should be definitely making sure that you've got that data, social media, um, a marketing schedule in some way, shape, or form, well and truly putting the place. So stand for something more and speak to the hearts and minds of your audience. Remember, once again, don't flog them stuff. Don't go into selling mode straight away. Stand for something. 
right? Understanding that no matter what kind of business it is, so even a prime example is people, I carry, I've worked with a number of accountants over the years and they go, oh, we just do accounting. Like, how can we green brain or zhuzh up accounting? And I said, well, of course you can. The reality is, is that, you know, people want to feel like you're going to take care of them. And maybe that's the road for accountants or lawyers. And we've seen even in Melbourne right now, there's campaigns with Zaparis lawyers who are a big um, a Melbourne law firm. And they've gone and put, got these big billboards all over the freeways. And all of the ads are more about take care of your family, make sure everything is, uh, is you know, is, is you know, um, make sure everything's more understanding, make sure everything goes more to the hearts and minds. Uh, so, okay, so Gordon has given us some feedback, right? So it doesn't give you search feature, but it shows you that uh, you are premium and it shows you that you are in the market for real. And Gordon, you talking about there, um, is that, so do you- uh, Gordon's asking, uh, what do you think about LinkedIn premium? Oh, great, okay, sorry, thank you. Sorry, Gordon, I've got the chat box just slipped down slightly. Gordon, we use LinkedIn uh, premium, we do. Um, I think it's a, a, tr a trial and error. Like I, I, yeah, the reality is, it's, I don't think it's suitable for every industry and every business. We do. Um, we use it obviously because we do a lot of LinkedIn marketing, and it's important for us to be able to um, get the right data set. But um, that's another product, guys, to check out as well. LinkedIn Premium. But if you're going to start spending a hundred dollars on something, spend it, or you're going to you're going to start to make some investment. The number one thing you should make into is Sales Navigator, without a doubt, because it will just be able to give you a core group of people that you want to be speaking to, you can start really speaking to directly who's really, really important. Hopefully that answers the question. So let's talk about now what I call, and write this down guys, the fast profit formula, the fast profit formula. So number one is you need to build an audience. That's how it works, you need to build an audience. Now you do this in two ways, recency and frequency. Now the rule of thumb, in my opinion, the rule of thumb in how we work it at the Entourage and with my other businesses that I'm shareholders and sit on the board of, is that we generally, our rule of thumb when we're doing things on social media or even on an email nurture sequence, is generally the sequence goes around th four to five emails or, um, or posts. And generally what we do is we do three educational or entertaining, three educational or entertaining, and then what we do is we have a thing called a call to action where we don't sell the product. We never actually sell the product. The call to action is generally, and I'll click on the next one, is for a lead magnet. What that means is that we've gone and now gotten ourselves a thousand followers on Instagram. And what we're doing is we're giving them information about, you know, Kerry's got, you know, she's in, in, in she's got, Tax returns coming up. She's given a, She's done a little video. Top five tips that you should be thinking about for your tax returns. Uh, you know, um, uh, Hitesh is going. These are the. These are the. Top, you know, he's done a little video or a product. Like hasn't talked about the product. He's talked about the benefits of you know healthcare technology. Um, you know, uh, you, you you're then going and trying to give people as much content and value as possible. But then what we do is we offer them a lead magnet. Now, lead magnet. Write this down can be low cost or no cost. Low cost or no cost. We're taking them as an Instagram user. We're getting them to click on a link now where they're putting in their first name, surname, mobile, email address. And we're getting them ideally buying something that seems like massive amounts of value for a low cost methodology. Hence, I gave you the example before, the $7 you know, they get a copy of, you know, eight hours worth of video, all these great speakers. Uh, we had Daniel Flynn from um, Thank You Water. We had uh, Vishan from Mind Valley, $500 million company in Silicon Valley over in the US. We had the CEO and founder of Oz Harvest. We had Peter Lakovich, number one sales trainer in Australia, who's worked, done $2 billion worth of sales, in some of the biggest companies. So obviously the $7, seem like massive amounts of value for people to click on. Convert audience. So the whole idea of it at this point is that they've bought the $7 lead magnet or they've, uh, they've opted in for the free ebook or the white paper. Now off the back of that, what we want them to do is now start to move through 
the buyer's journey. So this is where we now have a right to be able to speak to them about our products. But very, very importantly, it's extremely important that we actually go and book uh, an opportunity to understand what it is that particular buyer is looking for. But keeping in mind, so what there is, is at this point, I personally, one of the buying strategies and selling strategies that I like to use is consultative selling. So not all, not all people are going to fit your product, your one particular product. So sometimes don't go in there and trying to go, this is my $195 package, you should take it. You should be questioning them, getting as much data and fact finds as possible. This is where you have, and then once you've gotten that information, you seek permission. Write that down, seek permission to then be able to provide them with a solution. The two things you're trying to do through doing this is we're trying to write this down, we're trying to reduce buyer resistance, reduce buyer resistance, and increase buyer acceptance. Write those two things down. Reduce buyer resistance and increase buyer acceptance. They're the things that we're trying, that's the two main things we're trying to do here. Now, utilizing all of these products and service, all of this uh, nurture sequence and education and entertainment and so forth, what we're doing by doing that is we're lowering buyer resistance. Then what we do is we seek permission, the lower buyer resistance, seek permission, increase buyer acceptance. Write that down. Lower buyer resistance through this journey, in, seek permission, increase buyer acceptance. And this will reduce the amount of contact you're going to need to do with them in the long run. Last but not least, is we have amplify happiness. What this means is that once somebody is an entourage member, we're constantly giving them lots and lots of value. So that way, what they can do is do two things either retarget. So maybe if somebody's gone through Entourage for a 12-month membership or you come to one of our events, we're retargeting them about something else that we're doing now. But also, what we're also doing is we're also trying to get referrals at this point. So this, they're at the peak emotional state. They love what we've created and what we've helped them create. So why don't we get some referral marketing out of them at this point? Now, this is the formula that we use. I'm vision on time, so we might not be able to get through all of this, but if you write this down, as much as I give you right now, and if you want to go through personally brain braining your products and services, we could do that in a business growth strategy session. Okay, so green brain versus red brain, how this works. This is how people buy things. So people buy emotionally. I'll give you a prime example. I had a chance to work with Mercedes-Benz Melbourne. So Mercedes-Benz Melbourne got us in uh, at the entourage to do some work with them. Now they were, and I'll give you an example. So like, um, you, I, I just, so everyone knows what, which car I'm talking about because they brought out a whole range of cars now. But they had the, you remember back in the day, they had the A160. Now the A160 was like a mini version of like a C-Class, right? Now the challenge that they had was they kept on trying to, to sell um, the A-Class to parents. So obviously parents to buy for their, their kid. Now, I don't think it's a smart idea to buy your 18, 19, 20 year old kid who just got their P's and Mercedes Benz. I don't know if it's the smartest move, but there is a market for it. The problem was, is that they were using very much um, red brain ideas. So let me give you an idea of what we did with them. What we did is we worked out their marketing to actually go to their children, to go to their daughters, go to their sons, right? It was majority and the, the, the client avatar and the client um, profile was actually young, young, young daughters. That was what it was. 18 to 21 year old daughters. They were getting their license. They wanted something nice. Mum or dad have an uh, M class or a G class or a C class. And then we're trying to convince the parents to then purchase these. So the green brain is that the marketing that we came up with for them was that the daughter wanted to be like her parents and drive a Mercedes Benz. Now she doesn't know anything about the safety side of it. She doesn't know anything about, you know, um, you know, the performance of the car. She just knows she likes a Mercedes Benz because her father and mother have driven Mercedes Benzes and she wants to be like them. So that is the green brain emotional purchase cycle that we're trying to trigger on there. So that's the trigger. Now, when she comes in with dad and they go to buy the Mercedes Benz, the dad is not keen on spending 20, 30, 40, 50 grand on his first car for his daughter. So what do the salesmen or women on the floor need to talk about. 
They need to be talking about what we call red brain strategies. So red brain strategies are people allowing people to apply logic, analytics, and, and allow them to actually uh, provide justification, write that down, justification for their purchase. So the green brain is daughter's happy. The green brain for the daughter is I'm driving a Mercedes Benz and I'm a rock star. That's the green brain. The red brain is they come in there and the father, they go, the salesmen or women talk about the beach, the features, write this down, the features and the benefits. What are the features and the benefits? Well, Mr. Jones, the features and the benefits is that when little Sarah is driving around the busy streets of Melbourne or driving on the Southeastern Freeway or driving on whatever, or up the Hume Highway to go visit her friends in Sydney, you, we've actually got, we've actually got eight airbags in this car. Eight airbags versus the fact that if you went and bought your daughter a Toyota Corolla, it's got three airbags or two airbags, one on the dash and one in the, in the, um, in the steering wheel. Then the next part of the logic is, did you know, Mr. Jones as well, that the reality is that this car actually has X amount of kilometers per, per tank. So all of a sudden they're talking about fuel efficiency. These are red brain features and benefits that are gonna get the father to go, okay, it's a good purchase in the medium to long term. And the reality is we even got really, really deep down in it. And we, they would actually, the salespeople would really highlight the safety features and really say to a, a father, oh, do you wanna put your daughter who's learning how to drive in a car that's not safe? Well, Mercedes Benz is so much more safer than a Toyota or a Kia or whatever it might be. The reality is, you know, whether they played into it or not, it was that was the red brain strategy. Now, here's the trick. Here's the million dollar trick. You need to have a mix of both, green brain and red brain. You have to have a mix of both. But here is the trick. The million dollar trick is, it's called, write this down, a green brain, red brain, green brain sandwich. So all of your content that you put on social media, all of the content that you put on your website, the way you write your copies, the way you write, write your emails, the way you, you're communicating with people, you should always do green brain. So start it off with something emotional, go into the features and benefits so they can justify the purchase. Then you go back to green brain. Always leave on green, end on green brain. Reason B, because that's when you're going to ask them to take action. And that's the thing that got them interested in the first place. So what we did at Mercedes, with Mercedes-Benz is we would have father-daughter or father-son drive dates or parent parent child drive dates so mother daughter could come father daughter father son could come and they could have drive days at Phillip Island so that way all of a sudden the father went oh my god what a great experience I get to take my daughter on a safety car driving day at Phillip Island what a great way to connect with my daughter so it left them green brain emotionally high so then when they go to oh, no worry just sign here press the Express hard take, take the second copy. They've just gone and spent $39,000 getting their daughter an A160 or an A class or one of the smaller classes. See what, is, can I get a thumbs up if this seems useful? Can I get a thumbs up? Electronic thumbs up or whatever kind of thumbs, great. Hitesh, fantastic. This is useful, great. Sam, fantastic, beautiful, okay. This is gold, guys. This is something I've worked with for the last 10 years. And it has worked for me time and time again. It has worked for so many of our members. It's worked for so many businesses I know. I'm visual on time, but I'm just going to give you a couple of quick examples. So mums and dads, please take a complimentary piece of fruit from the basket. Now, why are they doing this? One of the biggest things that, now this is at, uh, at IGA. Now, Coles and Woolworths have done the same thing, but IGA did this first. A lot of people don't realise, but IGA nationally was one of the first people to encourage this. So mum and dad walk, mum or dad walk into, into the shopping centre. The kids are always tagging on them, trying to throw, you know, um, roll-ups and sugary products into the basket. They've given them a piece of fruit. They're not thinking that they're hungry. All of a sudden, they can get in there, do their shopping. Green brain idea. Samsung and Apple. I am vigilant of time, but I do want to show you this ad. This is one of the best ads I ever saw. Now, I am an Apple user. I'm an Apple user, and I've always got to carry this around with me. Look at that, even in my own house, I've got to carry this around with me. I'm going to show you this ad, and then I'm going to explain to you how they've green brained it. This is our final break. There they are. Hey. Clustered around Sorry. power outlets, near the recycling bins. Did you jiggle it? Stained carpeting and bathrooms. Fifth. 
tethered to the wall. Oh, come on. Denied the freedom to enjoy even the most basic things, like grabbing a drink or sharing a laugh with your coworkers or sitting with someone you know. Says your new iPhone's coming out soon. Hope it has a better battery. Totally. You're stuck here until your battery says so. Really? After all that time. I gotta plug in. You come in? Actually, I'm okay. Are you changing your battery? Yep. Is that the new Samsung? Yep. Have a good one, man. Don't be a wall hugger. Sorry. Get ultra power saving mode and interchangeable battery on the Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. Right. Put your thumbs up. Whether you use an iPhone or not, is that not a great ad? Just give me a thumbs up if you like the ad. Give me a thumbs up if you like that. It's fantastic, isn't it, right? So it is a classic scenario of green brain, red brain, green brain strategy, guys. The green brain is, they're using the green brain is, do you, so go on Apple users, are you a wall hugger? Like, are you a wall hugger? I'm a wall hugger. I'm the guy at Sydney Airport or LAX or whatever. Like, if I can't get to a lounge quickly, I'm just trying to get a bit of bit of battery before I get on the plane every single time because I use an Apple. It's terrible, right? They're terrible with, with, with Leo, you're nodding. You're in trouble, mate, because your phone always goes flat. I'm always like, Leo, I couldn't get through to you because my phone went flat, right? And the reality is, is that they, they have gone and played into the green brain. Now, what they do then is they go red brain and they show you that there's features and benefits. You can use somebody else's phone to charge, feature benefit. That, that gives you logic and that justifies the purchase of, got, of moving over to Samsung or buying a Samsung. Samsungs aren't cheap. The top of the range Samsung versus top of the range Apple, the Samsung's nearly $800 more expensive, right? The reality is they get the, the users because a lot of business people and a lot of people now get upset that their phones are going flat so quick. Now, the last part they got there is they go, um, you know, the battery can be changed. So all of a sudden, they go green brain, red brain, they're giving you all these features, but then they go back to green brain and you see these people happy, smiling, walking off, not having any the final frame of the whole commercial, the final frame is a guy, and I've left this up on the screen on purpose, is you've got, talk about green brain here, you've got a mother engaged with her little son playing a game versus the guy sitting on the ground eating his salad uh, who's plugged into the wall. Look, it's, it's genius. Like they have literally thought of absolutely everything there, right? You've even got people watching baseball up there, Australia, America's favorite pastime. It's all emotional drilling into your subconscious to get you to be in the green brain, peak emotion, so that you're happy to move forward and click and go, yes, I want to look at this product. Yes, I want to know more about the Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy 9 or whatever it might be. And that's how it goes from there. So, so here we go, perfect. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Seek first to be un to understand, then to be understood. Really, really important when you are trying to put together what your vision for your marketing strategy is, that you need to make sure that you are covering off on everything that people are keen to understand. Very, very important. But guys, I'm just vigilant of time, so I'm just gonna flick through, give me one second, and I'm gonna flick through uh, some of these slides. Can I just get a bit of a temperature check? How e how are we going with um, with what the content here? Has anyone got any questions? You want to put it into the um, into the channel? Give me if you've got any questions there. Feel free to put it into the channel. Very good, great. We're getting so we're getting a lot out of this. Wonderful. Okay. All right. I'm going to move over to a concept called Ford. Guys, if you can do me a favor on the left hand side of your page. Now, obviously, guys, if we if you want to go through the green brain, red brain, green brain strategy for your particular business product or service, we can do that in the business growth strategy session that we'll book um, shortly. So obviously we can deep dive a little bit further into it as well. Okay. So let me know if you've got that up on your screen. Does that come up on your screen, guys? Yep, right, fantastic. Okay, so on the left hand side of your page, I want you to write F O R D. This is the Ford formula, the Ford formula. This literally has been a life changer for me. So I have been engaging, to give you an idea, I have been engaging with a business coach or trainer since I was 16 years old. I know that sounds odd, but 16. At 16 years old, I went to a, a conference at the Mooney Valley Racecourse in Mooney Bonds, 
uh, and I went and spoke, I went and met a guy named Nick Lynch. He was the number one trainer for Harcourts New Zealand. He started Harcourts New Zealand. And then when I turned 18, I actually um, became a top performer in my first two years. Mate, I've got a, sorry, let's bring up my chat box again. Right, right, what have we got here? Much more entertaining than tax webinars, Andrew. Thank you very much, Kerry. Thank you for that feedback. Um, so what I did is then, when I was 18, I engaged a guy named Chris Helder, and he taught me this Ford formula. So I do want to mention him because it is his formula. Some, some people have gone, oh, I've seen that before. I said, that is, Chris Helder came up with this. But I'll tell you this now, this is the best, this will change your life. So you can do this via Zoom, phone call, and obviously once you get that lead opportunity to come in the door, you want to make sure that you are sticking to some sort of formula. Now, if you've got a team and you're looking to give the team some sort of framework, I don't like scripts and dialogues. I like frameworks. This is a framework. This is about being able to become more efficient and more effective at building a relationship very, very quickly with uh, the people that you get an opportunity to talk to. So the first one is, F is for, for, F is for family. Why is that working for me? Sorry. F is for family. Now, before my mother had early onset Alzheimer's, she used to always go shopping in Mooney Ponds at Woolley, at, at Mooney Pond Central. And in, in the Coles, at the front, there'd always be a guy doing uh, like a, a, a product sale. So, you know, like they'd have the scan pan one week, the next week they'd have a guy doing a demonstration on, on vacuum cleaners and so forth. Now, my mother, if anyone's old enough to remember 013, give me a thumbs up if you're old enough to remember 013. Anyone remember what 013 was? Does anyone remember? Give me a thumbs up if you remember 013. 013 was directory assistance. When we were children, when we were young, it was directory, everyone's smiling now, it was directory assistance, right? So what would happen is my mother would ring 013 and she'd introduce herself. Hi, I'm Mrs. Morello from Mooney Ponds, but you don't actually need to do that, mum. Just get the number for the pizza shop because I'm bloody hungry, right? So the reality is my mother would introduce herself and sometimes I'd walk in and I'd go, mum, who were you talking to just now? She's like, oh, the lovely lady from 013. So this was before Telstra turned it into a robot or took, took it to a call center in Manila or, or in India, right? So this was like Shazza. Shazza from Queensland, or Shazza from Albury, in the call center in Albury, would answer your phone. And it was a free call. The best part was it was a free call. So she'd answer the phone. She'd answer the phone and be like, oh, this is Sharon from Telstra. How can I assist? And your mama would be like, yeah, this is Mrs. Morello from Many Bonds. How's your day? She's like, good. And mum would be like, oh, where else in the world are you? And she'd be like, I'm in Albury in the call center. And my mum would talk to the lady. Right? So, because my mum would love to talk about the number one thing that was important to her, which was her family. Right? So, what would happen is she would go to uh, Coles and Moody Ponds. They would have someone doing a demonstration at the front. And a smart salesman, all he had to do, he or she, would go, oh, you know, tell me tell, where you're from. Right? She'd go, oh, we've been in Moody Ponds. My f husband's family's been here since 1956. They come on the boats from Italy in Port Melbourne PR. And, you know, I've got three kids. One's a, a real estate agent, owns a company called Jealous Craig Real Estate. The other one uh, was on The Apprentice and she pulled out like a paper clipping with me on the front of the, in the newspaper down in Melbourne. She then pulled out photos of my, my her nieces. So this my, my son gave me these two beautiful grandchildren. And then finally she'd be like, oh, my husband runs the service station on the corner of Tuscarora Road and Buckley Street. Now you let her talk about the most important thing to her, which is her family for 20 minutes. At the end of the 20 minutes, you wanted to buy a scan pen or a vacuum cleaner, my mum would buy a vacuum cleaner for her, my sister, and her daughter-in-law. Like, my mother would buy three. And she'd bring them home, and I'd go, mum, what have you done? And she's like, I met this lovely young boy. He was amazing. He listened to everything I had to say. And I told him all about you. And what ended up happening, he sold her three vacuum cleaners. My mother didn't need a new vacuum cleaner, but she bought it because she got to talk about the most important thing to her, which is her family. So that's it. And let me give you O. O is for occupation. You know, when I say occupation, this could also mean the business you want. This could also mean the career that you're in or the industry that you're in. Now, let me give you the hot tip around this one. In brackets, put know a lot about a little. So put know a lot about a little. And a little about a lot. Know a lot about a little. And a little about a lot. Does anyone want to go off mute for a second and just tell me what they think I mean by that? I would love to get someone to, do, I feel like I'm doing all the talking now and I need to drink some water. Does anyone want to tell me what they think? You don't have to take your camera off. Just tell me what you think 
I mean by knowing a lot about a little and a little about a lot. Any takers? First call, second call, third and final call, no further bids. All right, I'll give you the answer. So what this means, let me, t- let me give you the example of my dad. My dad has been in the service station game since 1971. 1970, he's still got one service station left. He had multiple sites. If anyone's old enough, he used to own Amico's. Is anyone old enough to remember Amico's? Give me a thumbs up if you remember Amico. So my, there we go, thanks Anna. So my father had Amico's. Then from Amico, British Petroleum, so BP, bought out Amico, and my dad became a BP. Then he got upset with BP, because he sat on the Franchise Council, and they weren't doing everything they said they were gonna do, so what did he do? He went then, and gone, he went and got himself a Caltex. Now, my dad, if you want to win him over, let's say you sell tools. There's like franchise little cars, vans that you can buy that sell, they'll sell tools. And they go from like business to business to business and they sell tools, right? So what happens is if you have one of those people, then what I recommend is you go to my dad and you go, all you're going to do is light the fire. Now, the trick here is don't, you know, don't bulldust people. Like, you've got to, don't try and pretend like you know something you don't. But if you go there and go, oh, Mr. Marlowe, what do you think about what Coles and Woolworths is doing to the independent service station providers of Australia? My dad will sit there for one hour, one hour, giving you a whole spiel about how Coles and Woolworths have prostituted the industry, they've undercut the price of fuel, they're ruining the independence, small to medium business owners can't survive based on this. So all of a sudden, it's creating a... It's got my dad emotionally revved up. It's got him talking about the thing that's most important to him, which is his business. You know, at the end of that, the, he lets my dad have a rant for 20 minutes on his soapbox. At the end of that 20 minutes, this kid's got, or franchise little toolbox franchise guy, he's got um, a box of spanners to sell. My dad will buy a new box of spanners for all of his mechanics. They don't need it. My dad's got a whole warehouse the tools in the back streets of Mooney Ponds that I could rent out for 90 grand a year, but he likes to just hoard stuff. Like he's got old Amico signs, old petrol pumps. He's got a 75 Statesman Caprice in there. If anyone remembers the Statesman Caprice, it was the Caprice in the Deville. My dad's got that in there, just sitting there, right? But my dad still would go and buy these from this guy because he listened to the most important thing to him, which was his industry and his business and his occupation. So F for family, O is for occupation. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking it so far. Great, beautiful. Next one. R is for recreation. Now, I started my real estate career in Melbourne in an area called Williamstown. Now, this is no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to remove some political rec- correctness for the sake of time, but effectively, Williamstown is a white Anglo area. It's five generations uh, of white Anglo. Everyone's Smith, Jones, Williams, and so forth. Now, I look like this. I know what I look like. I'm not naive to it. When I was 18, I used to go door knocking, trying to get business and people to sell their home. And I used to door knock in Williamstown. And people would be reasonably polite to me, so it wasn't too bad, but I wasn't getting any traction. Nobody was letting me get into their door. And one day, this guy that worked with me at Compton and Green Real Estate in Williamstown, he came up to me and his, his family, Glenn Baird, had been in Williamstown for like six generations. They were Wharfies and uh, Stevedores that long ago. So this guy was like, he was that sort of white Anglo that he drank so much wine that the cuticles had all broken in his cheeks. Like he was bright red cheeked, white skin, would have to put sunscreen on even during winter. And he came to me and he said, Morello, I think you should try door knocking in Newport, which is the suburb next door. And I said, why is that, Glenn? And I thought he was just trying to get me out of his territory. He actually genuinely from heart wanted me to do better, right? But I I put my back up. I was 18. I was immature. I didn't understand people then. And I thought, he's just trying to get me out of the area. And he goes, no, go to Newport because it's a more newer area. And there's a lot of Lebanese um, and Arabic community there. And I was thinking, and I cracked it. For three days, I was angry at him. I thought he was being racist. I was going to put a complaint in the whole lot. But I thought, before I make a big complaint, maybe I will go door knock. So I remember I went to Salisbury Street, Newport. Remember this name, Salisbury Street, Newport. And I door knocked the first house, number two. They, and someone answered the door. They were nice. It was 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. They were nice about it. I went to two. I went to four. I went to six. I went to eight. So I'm on that side of the street. I got to number 16, Salisbury Street, Newport. 
So I'll never forget it. I've done a thousand property transactions. It was my first one. I door knocked on the door. His wife answered the door. She said, actually, we're thinking about selling. I'd gone and door knocked hundreds of houses in Williamstown. I've done my fifth, my sixth or seventh house in Newport. And somebody says, I'm thinking about selling. I grab their details. I go back the next night. I sign it up. As I go down the rest of the street, same thing happened. All of a sudden, even though my name was Andrew Morello and I gave him my card, I said, I'm the area specialist. All of a sudden, the new Australians were a lot more open and malleable to having someone that had this look and appearance come into their home and tell them how much it was worth to the point where I became the leading performer for Newport for the company and also right across all of our competitors as well. Not because I was uh, Lebanese or Arabic or Muslim, but it was because I understood their culture because I'd grown up in Mooney Ponds and next to Mooney Ponds is a place called Coburg and a lot of the people I played soccer with growing up, they had come from a, a Muslim background or Islamic background. So I knew how to engage with them to the point where, I'm gonna give you an example here. My competitors, let's say John Williams from Williams Real Estate, he'd rock up at these houses in Newport and he'd knock on the door and he'd just walk straight in. Before I would knock on the door when I'd go to Newport and go into someone's home, I would actually remove my shoes because I knew that every time I went to go visit my mate Sirhan, his mum would ask me to remove my shoes before I went into the home. So I would remove my shoes. Now, here's the trick. If you're going to remove your shoes, make sure you don't have holes in your socks. I used to always have holes in my socks. It was very embarrassing. I'd have to tight. I'd have to scrunch it up under my toes. So make sure you, uh, you so I take my shoes off. Then I'd knock on the door and I'd press the doorbell. Now, they'd open the door and the first thing they would say, husband and wife would answer the door because that's what they do in their, in, their, in their culture as well. Husband and wife answer the door together and greet you. They would actually say to me, oh, you don't need to take off your shoes. You're a guest. I said, no, no, no. If I'm potentially going to be selling your biggest asset one day and representing you and your family, I want to make sure I respect your home and I'd make the buyers do the same. They loved it. All of a sudden, where's the buyer resistance, guys? Where's the buyer resistance? Down. All of a sudden, it starts to go down. The next part is I'd walk in the door and I'd shake the husband's hand and I'd put my hands by my side like this and I would give the wife a nod. She would either put out her hand or she'd nod back at me. I was respecting the fact that in their culture, some of the women do not actually shake men's hands. So all of a sudden, this woman, she's loving me. And this is the misconception that people have in their culture. They think that the men oppress the women. I said, no, mate. Behind the scenes, my mate's mums, they ruled the roost. To a T, they ruled the roost. Not a decision got made in those households that the wife didn't decide that was the final decision. The husband, his job was just to tick it off. Like, the wife always made the final decision. So I've walked in the door... I've taken off my shoes, I've nodded at the wife and given her respect and I've made her feel uncomfortable about putting my hand out and her saying she can't shake my hand. All of a sudden, all I've done, all I've done is got in the front door and I've already beaten all my competitors. All of my competitors are gone because I've taken into consideration the things that are important to them. So it falls under recreation, but I put religion, recreation, sport. Look, if you do business, uh, I know Anna's from Melbourne, if you do business in Melbourne, everybody asks, the first thing they ask is what footy team do you go for? It's like a thing that people ask him now. What footy team do you go for, Anna? What team? You don't have one? You must have had one growing up. Sorry, no, I don't support footy. So what I don't is that? I don't support the footy. I don't follow anyone. I've you, got Richmond supporters oh, around. We've got Collingwood supporters. Oh, Collingwood supporters around. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm surprised they haven't brainwashed you yet. Colin was surprised always. <laughs> no, they're working, on, they're working on it, but no, they haven't competed. Okay, all right, no worries. My mum goes for Collingwood because of Eddie Maguire. She doesn't know anything oh. about football. She just loves Eddie Maguire, so she goes for Collingwood. My brother's the prime, a example, a prime example is being able, thank you very much for sharing that. The prime example is actually understanding what it is that people like and not you know, giving them bull dust, but once again, knowing a lot about a little, a little about a lot. So I don't know everything about AFL either, Anna, but I could have a conversation with people about, you know, what team played or who they go for. And, I, you know, obviously I know that Eddie McGuire is the, cap, the president of, of Collingwood. You don't need to know all, every single team. But if it counts for anything, Anna, I go for Essendon, by the way, but I did grow up in the area. So that's the reason why. And last but not least, guys, last but not, I'll go, go Canberra Raiders. Thanks, Gary. There we go. Last but not least, is dreams. So how this works, guys, is that if you've gone now and spoken about their family, their occupation, their recreation, they'll trust you enough to share with you their dreams. Now, let me give you the guideline, or in some cases, the script and dialogue, but you've got to put your own spin on it. You're not Andrew Morello. You are your own person, right? So you've got to give your own spin. 
So what I would say is this is my script and dialogue that I would use. And I would say, Mr. and Mrs. Klein or Mr. CEO or Mr. C CTO or Mr. CMO, you've talked to me about the important things to you, your family, being able to spend more time with your children. you talk talked to me about the business growth that you want to have over the next 12 months, 24 months and three year north star. You've talked to me about the fact you want to be able to free up your time so you can do more sailing on your weekends. So with your permission, with your permission, right? So they've shared with you their dreams now. now. If you don't want to use the word dreams, you might say goals. With your permission, can I show you how Andrew Morello and their entourage can help you achieve your goals, dreams, and whatever. At that point, you shut up. You stop, whoever speaks next loses. Because the reality is at that point, is that you've listened to the things that are most important to them, you've built the rapport with them, you've created a relationship, and this is your opportunity then to actually, once you've sought their permission, now, some people would actually look at me and they'd be like, yeah, that's what we got you here for. And I said, great, I just wanted to make sure I was in the right room. Now, write this down, guys. This is Euro Linguistics Programming, NLP. If you want to know more about it, we actually run it. As part of our membership, we run courses in Euro Linguistics Programming. What I'm doing there is I'm saying, Mr. and Mrs. Clients, I utilize their name, John and Mary, you know, Mr. Mr. Jones, who might be the CEO or decision maker for a tender that we might have put in or a training program that we might have put together. You've talked to me about what's important to you and I go and then utilize the things that they spoke about. You've talked about your two kids, you know, Steve and, and, and Sarah. You've talked about your business. How it did, it did $150,000 in revenue last year, but you wanted to be doing half a million dollars a year so you can spend more time with your children. You talked to me about how you want to make, you want to go and buy a, a sailing boat or you're into drift car racing like your cat was yesterday and she's got $100,000 worth of cars sitting in her garage because she uses them for racing. So you want to be able to do, spend more time doing things you love and most of all you share with me your goals and your dreams. Now can I, with your permission, slight pause, with your permission, slight pause, Put that in brackets. Can I show you how Andrew Morello and the entourage can help you achieve those goals? And then we stop there. And what we're doing is we're allowing it to sink in. And we're also seeking permission consciously and subconsciously. And then, we, then we've got permission. We can start to talk about our product, our service, or how we can assist them. Can I get some feedback on that, guys? What do you reckon of that? Yep. Thumbs up. Can, can, can anyone, can, it, can someone take themselves off you and tell me what's the number one thing they've gotten out of the content so far? Is it forward? Is it blue, the green brain, red brain, green brain strategy? What is, I, I just want to get some feedback. Put, put it in the comments too, but I'd love for you to take yourself off you and just, you, you don't have to switch your camera on. And just tell me what the best thing you've got out so far is. What do we got here? Confidence, right? Are you saying I'm confident, Gordon? Or is that so, uh, consultative selling? Great, Tracy, beautiful. We're on the right page here. I like green brain, red brain, green brain analogy. Great concept. The pyramid, I try not to use it, the word pyramid. It sounds like it's some sort of a scheme, but yes, the hierarchy, the entrepreneurial hierarchy. I know what you're talking about, Sam, right? Anyone else? Great, okay. Well, what I'm going to do, guys, now is I'm just visual in a time here. I've got about another 20 minutes with you guys. These are just some examples of people that we've worked with, guys, helping them build buying, buying strategies, and so forth. Okay. What I want to do is I want to spend the next 10 minutes talking to you about what we do at the entourage, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity with a link. And then I'm going to stick around when we finish. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do a bit of a Q&A. But I want, to, I want you to understand my forward, my family, occupation, recreation, dreams. This is Morello's 30-second answer at 3 a.m. What this means is that if someone came to me at 3 o'clock in the morning and asked me, why do I do what I do? I can answer it like this. So Andrew Morello wants to make lots and lots of money to pay other people really, really well to do the things that he doesn't want to do so he can do more things he loves doing with the people that he loves. That's what I, that's what I want to do. Now, the reason why I put that up there is it's really, really important to me that I work with people and the entourage works with people to assist them to be able to do exactly the same thing. So the thing that breaks my heart is so many businesses and so many business owners are doing something that either they don't enjoy, number one, or number two, 
They're doing things that aren't actually producing a result. And it upsets me. I sit in there drooling and scratching away and clawing away, trying to make an honest dollar. When I go, you can just tweak two or three very small things that will give you that opportunity. So I want to talk you through some of the stuff we do at the Entourage. And then what we'll do is I'll get Leo to pop in a link and you can, it's a deep dive to see if you come, it's not for sale, just this is what we do. So we're not selling it today. This is just to let you know what we do. What we can do is it's a complimentary 90 minute deep dive strategy session with either myself or myself, one of my team over the next seven days. You can book in one of those and we can talk through not only the strategies we spoke about today, but we can also deep dive and I can see, we can see if this is relevant to you. It's all done on an application basis. You can't actually buy it. It's nowhere to be bought online. It's not an online program. It is something that we'll go through and I will go through and show you what the hell we do. So the program's called Accelerate. It's got a number of different parts. So the three pillars it's got is immersive training, so we've got the six elements, uh, immersive 34 workshops throughout the year. Now you're not supposed to do all 34 workshops. What it is, is you've got uh, six elements there. You're supposed to only work on the elements that you need to work on right now and do the workshop. If you do all the workshops, you become a workshop junkie. You never got any, get anything done, right? So the six elements. You've got an online uh, Accelerate Business Growth Hub. So there's 10,000 hours of recorded content that's been categorized and cataloged in order for you to be able to go to at any point and actually be able to take advantage of that. All of the workshops are then recorded and put onto the growth level as well. So if you do miss a workshop or you do want to watch it on a later date or revise on it, you can self-teach as well and get the opportunity to do that. You get access to all the downloadable tools, templates and shortcuts. What this means is that you're in a position there to be able to take advantage of the all of those simple templates and tool, 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 um, templates and shortcuts and you can utilize those for your own businesses. You get a one-on-one -on -one coach and accountability. So that includes uh, every 30 to 45 days, a session with a success coach that is picked for you. But their job is to give you access to the 27 experts. So the 27 experts are experts across all fields. I'll give you an example of a couple of those in a moment. We have an expert round table day where we do it on Zoom and all the experts come onto Zoom and you can actually pick, it's a choose your own adventure. You can go and ask them sporadic questions and work out which is the experts you wanna work with. You've got access to the mastermind circles, exclusive Facebook community, and also we have a success retreat, one a year for Accelerate and one for and two for uh, our Elevate members. Um, some of the things that we try and cover off in a very short period, so immediately your first 90 day action plan, not enough consistent lead flow, lack of sales conversion, working on the business too much. These are the, this is the framework and model we use. So we ensure that you are building a, a, building a business that's going to enable, enable you to reach that three year north star that we spoke about. We develop your individualized 12 month roadmap with you. And we have immediate uh, outcomes for your 90 day action plan. The immersive training includes the 34 workshops, the online growth hub, the downloadable tools and templates and shortcuts. These are examples. I couldn't put all 34 in there, but an example of some of the workshops. This is a two day workshop, selling essentials workshop with Jack and myself. You've got advanced sales workshop. This is with Peter Lakovich. You might have seen him, some of you, I think, attended Reboot. This is with Peter Lakovich. It's also a two day workshop. Everything is done on Zoom. Everything's done, it can be done remotely, or we do have a studio in Sydney that some people do like to attend as well. Conversion rate optimization workshop. So often people are doing, getting their marketing right, and they've got a great marketing background, but for some reason the conversion rates are 10, 15, 20%. Our conversion rates are up there at 70, 80% because of our sales process. So making sure we've got that right. Automating your business workshop. Obviously, if you're a one, two, three, four person show, how do we then make it easier for you to be able to systemize everything that you're doing? Here's an example of all of the workshops. Instagram, Facebook, building your marketing funnel, conversion rate optimization, LinkedIn mastery, paid media ma management. You know, it, all of these are all part of your workshops. They're all recorded. You don't need to do all of them. Four sales workshops, operations. All of these here, the one, probably the most important one in operations is automated business, the one down the bottom there. So how to systemize your business so it works without you. Um, finance workshop. So probably another really good one there is cash flow, cash management. You know, Kerry talked about it before. Um, uh, who else was speaking about? I think there's a couple of you talking about some of the cash flow stuff. Gordon was talking about it as well. So uh, having an understanding of your numbers. Management and leadership workshops. The top one is the most important, which is defining your vision, mission, and values. Defining your vision, mission, and values. Coaching and accountability. Excuse me. 
Uh, you have one-on-one -on -one coaching accountability every four to six weeks. The reason why I say it's every four to six weeks is because what happens is when you do your initial success coaching session, you might have set a 90-day action plan. And that 90-day action plan, you, they might, your success coach might want to touch base with you in two or three or three weeks' time to make sure you're on track because it's all about getting that habit and that system in place nice and early. Implementation session. There's 27 experts there, 27 experts and partners that they will align you with. I'll show an example of some of these. Heather Porter, she gets paid $7,000 a speaking gig. She speaks globally. She's American, American originally, living in Australia and goes between the two. Peter Liston gets paid $5,000 for a speaking gig. These are all included in our membership. They're not additional costs. Access to these people, you go into a portal, you click at any time, you're booking a time that works for both you and them. You can see their calendars. They set a number of calendars. You've got 27 of these. Lindsay Fraser, social media advertising and lead generation expert. Kate Kemp, financial performance engineer expert. Aidan Parsons, working on leadership automation. Uh, these are just eight of the 27. Obviously, I'm not going to put them all down there. Uh, these are examples of testimonials from people talking about how amazing that these um, coaches are and these experts are. Scott McLaren. Last but not least is Expert Roundtable Days. I'll show you how these work. We're here today at Expert Roundtable Day with our Entourage Vision Partners. These are people with deep expertise in different specialties and functions as to how they relate to business. Whether it's you want to go deep around marketing and generating referrals, sales process and optimizing conversions, product development and product delivery, financial management, legal management, building process and automation into your business so that you can work less in it and more on it. So it might be around people management and leadership. Our vision partners here at the Entourage are here to help you drive you and your business forward. Fantastic. Last but not least is the like-minded community, guys. But this is probably the most important part. So I'll tell you, the average person stays in the entourage membership for, on average two to four years. The reason why they join is for the immersive training and the coaching and accountability. The reason why they stay is for the like-minded community. So Going to give you a little quick look at some of that. We've got the uh, every if you are a member at the Entourage, you get a VIP access to all of our events, which means you do not pay for any of your tickets to any of our future events that you can attend. Facebook, um, you get access to the Facebook group, which is exclusive only to actual paying members. And this is an example. So you've got sharing wins, advice and referrals, you've got networking, you've got member meetups, you've got challenges. So these are members all around Australia and all around the world now. Um, you've got people wearing the heart of this thing, outsourcing help. You've got people getting customer feedback. So what consumer feedback? We talked about product to market fit before. So being able to go, okay, guys, I've got a thousand people I can ask that are in a private community and go, these are the three or four products I'm looking to launch. Would these, do you think, get people's feedback? Is it suitable? Is it something you would look at purchasing? Uh, tech resources. We had a big, uh, a bit of a debate going on over the weekend. People like should you use HubSpot versus Active Campaign to understanding which is the best before you go and spend money setting up a whole new CRM, making sure you've got the right CRM. Um, then people sharing wins. You know, had a 222% up uh, up on last year in our sales, 25% uh, increase in the last month. Jay, who's been with us for seven years, this member has been with us for seven years. This one here, and I'm circling right now, seven years. He closed in March. He's been working on a government tender with us for the last six months. Prior to March, he closed a five million dollar deal, a five million dollar tender. He's in the um, the IT space. When he joined us, he was a two hundred eighty thousand dollar a year business. He's going to now do this year close to ten million dollars in revenue. That's over a seven year period. He's grown that. He picks up his son and daughter every day from a private school in Melbourne. Literally every day he picks them up, which is absolutely beautiful. Once again, people are sharing and celebra celebrating their wins. Last but not least is as one success retreat a year. I'll show you what that looks like. What we do is we work on your business during the year. Then at the retreats, we work on you a lot of it, a lot of the time. So that what we do is we do consciousness training. We do overcoming limiting beliefs, purpose playbook. We do yoga classes. We do, now they are all husband, wife, life partner and child friendly. You can bring them along. This was the one we did at the end of last year in Daydream Island. We'll hide out the whole island. We want to get to the end of this retreat and have you feel like you've had a holiday, but like you've grown in every single aspect and every single element of yourself.
as about a personal journey as it was about a business journey. To see people being raw and real and honest and authentic. Connected with awesome people, like-minded people and life-changing moments. So guys, what I'm going to do here now is in the, um, in the chat box, I'd love for you to book in that, as I mentioned before, that sort of 90-minute um, business growth strategy session with either myself, one of our team. Um, what we can do there is as well, included in that as a bare minimum, I will throw in, uh, I'm just going to bring it up, uh, this here. So I'll share this with you. So at a minimum, guys, what you will get, you will get this. Is that coming up? Have you guys got that? Yep. So this is called your business growth map. So what we'll be doing is we'll be going through this together for your business. So whatever stage your business is at, what you'll do at a minimum, you'll leave that 90 minute session with this partly completed, but you'll have a defined um, process there. I've cleared a lot of time in my diary um, over tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and I've even put Saturday and Sunday in there. So um, I'll be working from Melbourne Saturday, Sunday, but I can definitely do Zooms with you. If you click on that link now for me, if you just click on that link. If you're, just, if you're sitting on the fence and you're not sure, or you're saying, oh, it's early stages for my business, and you just want to have a bit of a chat, we can just have a bit of a chat. So obviously, we'll give you all of the information we can go over what we went through today. And just do me a favor, guys. Once you have booked that, someone's already booked mine, just give me a thumbs up or electronic thumbs up. Feel free to put the uh, little thumbs up in your corner of your screen. Um, but uh, you will walk away with just a little bit more clarity on what it is that you're going to look to achieve over the next three, six, 12, and 36 months. Um, you will walk away with this as a gift, so you can, you've got that, um, but you'll be able to also deep dive on some of the things we've spoken about today. So if there's green brain, red brain, green brain strategies are something you're really keen to try and delve into and make suitable, then you can do that there as well. So just feel free to click on the, the link. And then what have we got here? I think. Great. So you click on the link there. As I mentioned, you'll be getting anyone else is there. Yeah, and then obviously during that session as well, we can talk about what are your best next steps for your business, for you as an individual, and also um, for what we do. Um, but would love to love to have that session with you. Just give me a thumbs up if you booked any. Try and t grab the times. That you're that's suitable for you obviously they will fill up so we're doing another event tomorrow which we'll be offering those times as well so if you even if you want to book something in for now but if you want to change that you'll get all my details on there uh, thank you very much we've got one book in there great has anyone got any questions they want to ask you know if they want to ask any questions feel free to ask the questions i'm just going to bring my chat box up Otherwise, you can take yourself off mute. Has anyone got any, any comments on how they went today? Any comments on how they went today? You can take yourself off mute if you want to say a couple of words. I don't mind. Just give me a thumbs up if you've booked as well. Yep. Who was that? Is that you, Susie? Sorry, yes, it is me. Can you hear me? I can. How did you go, Susie? Yeah, look, I thought it was really good. I, my, my goodness, I was just thinking it, it must be so tiring for you going for, for two and a half hours when you haven't got people in the room. It's, that would be really exhausting. It's, um, it's, look, I love what I do, so it's okay. Um, I, I do... I do love cameras on generally, guys, but I've let you get away with it. So thank you, Anna, for staying on the whole time and Atesh for most of it, Gordon. I do love seeing the faces. If I can see the faces, then, you know, I'm Italian, Susie, so I can talk all day. You know what I mean? So okay. um, there we go. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks, there, Susie. You're there. Thank you. <laughs> I do love the face. But I, look, to give you an idea, I'm doing this today. I will be um, in front of this studio, which I've set up at my place in Vaucluse. Um, yeah. And... I will be presenting literally till Leo. What time is it? Seven thirty tonight. Is it seven thirty? What time? I think I finish at seven thirty tonight. 
and I've been going since 7 a.m. Oh, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, and then tomorrow I'm doing uh, another event for another group that we've partnered with, and that's they've got, um, I think it's close to 100 attending, so that will be another full day tomorrow. And then obviously, hopefully, um, you guys have booked in some sessions over the next few days. We'd love to spend some time with you guys one-on-one and uh, talk about how you can uh, grow your community, grow your business, grow your tribe and your following and uh, make the magic happen. All right. Well, I thought it was a really, really good session today. It had some real nuggets of gold in it. So thank you. I think we, have we recorded it, Leo? Yep. Right, we recorded it too. Great. So we that would be it. great. Um, could we, would we be able to put that up on our um, Facebook page and stuff? Send us a link. Can't hear you, can't hear you. You can't hear me? Yeah, no, we can. Okay, great, yeah. So we'll do a little uh, reach out to anyone that might have missed today and give them an opportunity to log on to that as well. Okay. Um, has, anyone, has anyone else got any questions or comments or outright abuse? I don't mind. You can abuse me if you want. Sophie, what did you reckon? Oh, I think it's great. <laughs> Great. And Gordon, thanks for your contribution today. Really appreciate it and enjoy it. Uh, definitely, as I said, I said earlier, it's eye opening. We all think we know a fair bit about what we do, but this really gives us the icing on the cake to make ourselves stand out more in the crowd. Right. Fantastic. Beautiful. Anna, how'd you go? Yeah, good. I was just yeah. commenting now, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, so I can't get my chat What's my chat box, Leo? I'm hopeless. Make sure you hope. Yeah, and there's some good um, tips there and some food for thoughts and take home ideas there to um, tinker away on. Here we go. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, I've got it here now. Wait, I booked a session. Oh, there we go. Tish, thank you. Mate. Uh, Sam, thanks, Sam. Really appreciate that. Um, Anna, great session, beautiful. Right, well guys, um, as I said, if I'm about to log off, so if I log off, you need to click on that go.oncehub. Oh, Sam, how'd you go? How'd you go today, mate? No, Stop. well played, yeah, well played, Andrew. I reckon you've um, you nailed that. Some good content, and I reckon it's, uh, yeah, definitely something, even if you've been a successful business, it's you're so busy doing your Monday to Friday, sometimes you need to take a step back and really focus on some of those other elements. So I think it was, um, yeah, well played. Beautiful, thank you very much. I appreciate everyone uh, logging on. As I said, there's, there's a, um, just before I log off, if you haven't booked yet, feel free to click on that link, go.oncehub.com forward slash Andrew Morello. You can pop in and pick your best time before they fill up. And uh, looking forward to catching up with you guys one on one. And looking forward to coming up to uh, looking forward to coming up to Orange as soon as possible and doing actual uh, real face to face event. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Andrew. Ciao. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.